in this series. Uh, sorry, that's Yundo. Uh, I apologize, Jisun. Um, would never comment about uh, about people's hair. Yundo all the time. Just never stops. <laughs> Um, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Okay, Tristana going to be taken away from Bulldog. There goes the LeBlanc as well. And I think this is an interesting start to the draft because these feel like very targeting bands. And our drafts haven't felt like that. Our drafts yeah. have been, what is OP? Rumble, Ezreal, Ash. Rumble's banned, but Ezreal, Ash still open and available. Vi still open and available, which we know D-plus love play. And Lucid has said himself best Vi in the league, and he's made us believe it. Uh, we'll see. Pretty good. He plus end up banning the Renekton here. What? Do, I, I mean, I feel like it has to be the Ezreal from Quando yes. Freaks. It, that is mandatory. Uh, and then it's given over a lot of power to D plus, but you get a lot of power back. There's a lot of strong picks open and available at this point. It's the Vi. That is not, notably, that is not the Ezreal. But it's the also not Ash. And Ash has been sort of this accepted answer. Uh, here in the LCK to the Ezreal. I want to caveat that with, I don't think it's good. <laughs> um, but it is one of these things where you can sort of bait aiming into Arcane shifting forward and then hit yes. him in the face with an arrow. It, that has been done before to great effect. Indeed. Um, we could just see like Ash Sejuani come out here as the one, two from Quantum Freaks. We'll see if they opt to go in that direction. They're definitely probable. It seems like they're gonna lock in this Ash uh, for Leaper. I think Ash is a good first call there, but I wouldn't mind the Sejuani. Yeah, I think especially with the Vi band out, and you know the sort of picks that Lucid likes to lean on. Like, he could take Lee Sin, but I think Cuz playing Sejuani at least in a Lee Sin, you're fine. Could even go in like a bit of a different direction. And lean. We've seen Cuz have decent success on like the, the Nidalee. What um, about Shivana? Yeah. Um, well, I think they do want to win, so. Ah, winning. OK, yeah. well, maybe a blind Nah then. Yeah. It's still looking a bit ambiguous when it comes to the wanting to win well, aspect. Well, I feel like Kingen hasn't as much generally been playing range top as others, but he, he still is able to bring it out, and I feel like that should be the approach here if you want to win lane up against this Gnar. Lucid toying with the idea of, yep, those are all the junglers we see pegged. <laughs> um, yep. Certainly a bunch of the ones that uh, Lucid has been playing. He's going to take away the Sejuani. Feels like a denial. You can also yep. see that he's not too psyched about it. I think Kennen here for Kingen would make some sense. Yep. Um, you know, I feel like, especially with the Cassante and the Renekton band away, we've seen Kingen play a lot of Aatrox. You can play that into the Gnar, but it looks like they're toying with some of the ideas here. Hovering the Karma, but actually might end up going for it. So looking for a strong lane in the bot lane does make you very reliant on that uh, Sejuani for engage. And also, you're not going to be able to answer the Gnar. So another question for Quantum Freaks, do they want to pick something up for Cuz uh, now? Or are they more focused on ensuring they have a good bot lane 2v2? They're looking at the Leona. So this gives a lot of strength to your engages, a lot of power, but the lane phase might be a bit rough. This could be a swap angle. Yeah. Let's see if they opt into that. All right. Second rotation, I think D-plus probably focusing on the junglers. And I mean, we talked about the Kennen we announced into Anar. You, you certainly got to expect that'll be banned away. I would assume so. And they've got a couple of band slots in order to do it. A couple of other choices there at the same time. I mean, the Talia for Showmaker has been something he's relied upon. I think that it was banned a few times in their series against T1 as well, if memory serves. And so maybe getting rid of that could be a decent choice. But instead, they're going to take away the Jace. You know, would you be worried about the Silas? We saw Showmaker play it last time. It didn't really have that much impact. But Ash, Gnar, and Leona, those are some high tier ultimates. That yeah, picked up, so. and he picked the Silas with a Nar on his team. Yeah, which I thought was a bit strange, and also had a decent game, if I remember correctly. Nidalee going to be taken away from Cuz. I think uh, the jungle pool probably going to get uh, thinned out a little bit more, even as the Twisted Fate taken away from uh, Kingen as well. Yeah. Not something that I've, I'm really thinking about these days, but it is something that Kingen uh, pioneered in the top lane also, here in the LCK. Also, something that Showmaker can play. So True. perhaps concerned a little bit about that. That's and actually double almost dip. definitely a, a Showmaker yeah. ban. I apologize. But Kennen's still open and available as an option. Uh, D plus have banned away that Nidalee and uh, sort of deciding on what else they want. The Zyra could be an option, but they instead go for that Corky away from Bulldog. So Tristana uh, is still up. Yeah. If you want to get a counter pick mid, I think that's completely fine. You know the jungle matchup, so I think maybe just take Cuz's jungler here. Zyra's still open, Ivan's still open. Shivana's still open. 
Yeah, I don't want to mention that one. I mean, I think at least in this situation, there's a lot of setup for the Shibana. A lot of CC. Oh. Uh, is, uh he's playing with it, but it is going to be the Zac locked in. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a Cuz special. It's one that only he's really playing in the jungle. Bit of an interesting one because, you know, when I see Zac and I see an immobile AD carry on the enemy team, I'm like, oh, we're gaming. When I see an Ezreal near the team, I'm like, are we gaming? And also, when I see my opponent is Sejuani, I'm also not feeling like I'm gaming. Yeah, decent ability to interrupt that, but there's a lot of engage potential from Quantum Freaks, I'll tell you that much. I think everyone on that team has some potential for it. Showmaker gonna lock in the Azir, so definitely wanted to keep them at bay. Uh, also has a great ability to stop the Zac from closing that gap. I really want the Olaf, by the way. I feel like Olaf, it, you can run down the Gnar, and you Armor can ignore shields? the Zac. And, yeah. you, and you get the shields, exactly. It, it's very Feast of Famine, but there's a lot of CC on the side of Quantum Freaks. They would just be able to ignore that. Ooh, from Viking to Pirate. Wait. That's that's a Lee Sin. Is it going to be Sejuani top and the Lee Sin jungle? Is it going to be Lee Sin top and the Sejuani jungle? Is it Sejuani mid lane, Karma jungle, Azir support? We can only wonder. Uh, and now Bulldog trying to decide on what to play and goes with the Zeri. Uh huh. Some interesting compositions coming out here. These are champions that have been picked. Yeah, so, you know, like the Olaf said, Juani, they were kind of hovering. The theory behind that is obviously Olaf can stack up the passive very quickly. You can kind of sync that together. Lee Sin said, Juani, punishing for the Gnar, but doesn't inspire as much confidence. But it really comes down to playing around that top side, having a lot of strength there. Ezreal Karma is going to have Pryo bot. You've got Nazir who's going to be fine in the mid lane. Uh, and then if you get to team fights, will be comfortable. Looks like they swapped last minute, so it's King in oh. on the Lee Sin. A bit of that rascal flavor, actually. Of course, we have seen the Lee Sin top really dominate in a few matchups. It was Rascal that was the one really leveraging that. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing whether Kingen can do the same thing. I don't remember whether Kingen played a, a game or two, but we know that he does like to experiment there towards the top side. I'll do a little bit of research and uh, have a look at uh, whether it is something that he's done in the past, because my memory's just not what it used to and be. You know, you know? We, we've looked at a lot of matchups to punish the Gnar, being things like range matchups like Kennen that can trade into him. But the other side of the coin is these champions who can close the gap consistently. And Lee Sin is definitely one of those. If Lee Sin said you want to get on this Gnar, he will die. And that's clearly the game plan here for D plus K. On the other side, engage across the board for the side of Quantum Freaks. They want to be the ones who dictate fights. They're the ones who start it, and they have the 80 carries to clean up. Well, looking forward to it. We do have confirmation as well. King in 100% win rate on the Lee Sin. Let's get into game number one. I feel like the uh, the chant leader for Qu the Quanong Freaks was having a giggle halfway through his uh, his little chant there. I liked it. It really does add a little bit of uh, jubilation uh, to the uh, beginning of this game, where D Plus are already um, really aggressively moving into the enemy uh, jungle. Yeah, they're looking to try and challenge here, and Amy and Kellen going for a bit of cheese. This I, I is think very cute. I think Quanong Freaks are saying, "Look, we're just going to swap." You yeah, know, we don't really have a choice in the situation. We've lost control of bot side, uh, and Maybe that looks to be the the strategy. Something. They're leading on the back of this. Yeah, but well, D, D plus have kind of disengaged though, so I'm I not think, sure how aware they are of the impact of their actions. I feel like they know that this is going to be a lane swap, um, but I don't know whether it's necessarily something they were looking for. I think D plus would have really liked to have honest lanes, which is why Quantum Freaks, I think, probably very ready to go for this plate. That is going to be the case. It's, ooh, ships in the night. As uh, Kaz looking for a little bit of a start on the enemy blue buff. Okay, well, they're definitely going to have an idea for now. The fact that Dudu's coming down to help out with this. I'm getting a little bit confused now because there's two junglers on D plus' side, and now we're lane swapping, so I'm, I'm just... It's just odd. Uh, it's all right. Q going to miss. So King and still getting his eye in. Kellen, yeah, he's going to go for his mid. turn. Let's see how this one goes as the point blank Q. That one's going to land, and King and somehow manages to skip through the minions. That was very nice. So the upgrade in accuracy, quite high. 
Yep, just kind of bullying out Bulldog here, trying to make him have a hard time. Not that much fun, but it's this weird triple laning where you are sharing XP quite heavily, but if Bulldog can't get oh. to lane, then he's not going to benefit. He is level two, though, so you can't really go in on this. Doo-doo is just hanging about. Yep, Kellen just throwing cues, being frustrating. I feel like the uh, the karma can be pretty powerful oh, in and lane swap scenarios two? as King In goes in once again. This level one experimentation of the Lee Sin is kind of working out, but there are three bad guys there. Cuz also in a little bit of trouble as the Sand Soldier's getting involved. King In was still on fire while he was looking for an angle to get back in, but he's still lurking and he's still level one. As now the Hawkshot is going to spot him out. Oh dear. He's he not, is, oh, uh, yeah, he's, he's just, God. he's totally fine because there is a teleport uh, coming into the bottom lane. Leaper is going to dive towards uh, Kingen, who gets the heal from Kellen and uses Bulldog to taxi back to his teammate so he doesn't have to flash. There's just no oh, way that Kingen should have survived that passage of play. Yeah, not I even really a little bit. I really think Quantum Freaks kind of massively misplayed that uh, in a couple of key moments. So now, Dudu's laning against Aiming, who's level four. Show make a TP top and grab the massive waves. So he's got the highest chest in the game. And I think Quantum Freaks have honestly kind of fumbled this a little bit. King is going to grab some farm mid just to get some levels. And we were talking about Rascal uh, being the guy that played the Lee Sin top. He actually lost to Dundon um, last time around, which doesn't bode well for the Lee Sin. Um, but I do want to go back to what I said before. Kingen doesn't know how to lose on Lee Sin. He oh, has yeah. never done it. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, in this lane swap situation, he has kind of been left out to dry a bit. Yeah, it is. Now, it's it's, it's going to be hard. And, uh, you know, doing his best. Oh. D delicious. Delicious. D delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Nailed it. Nice work, cuz. He's going to eat the corn chip, and everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. As Kingen's mid laner now. Yeah. What a very weird start to the game. Um... Do you think it makes sense that he chose Tien's skin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Based on how things have gone so far. I mean, he's been hitting the Qs pretty convincingly. Yeah, it's looked pretty good. Those, in those early skirmishes. Uh, and now, finally, we're going to get normal lanes. Uh, Showmaker is a bit ahead of Bulldog. He's also going for the Grass Pizier to be a bit more bulky. Fort laners, pretty even. Andal even has an XP lead over Kellen, although there's a big wave. You might catch it up. Uh, and top lane, I think Dudu's a little bit ahead, but... You will see Kingen. Actually, I think Kingen's going to pick up that wave and be ahead. So he'll be ahead in farm. I don't know whether he'll be ahead in I think experience. He's pretty close to level four, so I think he'll be okay. Oh, Overall, yeah, now. nothing crazy has come from the lane swap. But I just think with how isolated Kingen was, and they'll kind of he went for the flash Q instead of the E flash. And I think if he E flash, he was just dead. Oh, aiming Whoa. actually misses the W there as Andal goes in, finds a shield at daybreak. Aiming, holding onto the cleanse for now. That is certainly good. Aiming. The longer cooldown, it might have been a level six and uh, a kill the aiming angle. Yeah, last time aiming was playing into an ash. He didn't go cleanse, he went barrier, and Kellen built Mikhail's first and he died. This yeah. time it's like, no, I'm cleansing. Well, now Kellen is taking a fair bit of damage, aiming, missing a few of these Qs. But there is a Sejuani making her way in alongside a Zac. And so just some tanks hitting each other with some uh, buttons that don't really do anything. But and Ignite, they're gonna walk away. Yeah. And it's actually really hard to kill a Karma without Ignite because she just Mantra Ws you and she heals so much yeah, true. in the early skirmishes. So the fact they didn't get a kill there on a Karma, the fact they didn't even burn Flash, and obviously Aiming still has Cleanse and Flash, uh, Quantum Freak's gonna be in a little bit of a power deficit in lane as a result. And uh, now you've got Bulldog getting completely zoned away from a cannon minion that is yeah. not getting any aggro for now, and Showmaker's a bit annoyed about it. Once this, uh, yeah, there I feel is. like he could have walked up to the wall just to the top left there and just done the extendo beam and got that cannon. Might have been an angle. Sometimes, you know, these mid laners just don't know all of the strats, although they probably yeah. know that one. Um, yeah. Either way, not having a good time in the mid lane. Obviously, Showmaker picked up that massive wave top, but even ignoring that, you know, is he a, a pretty punishing laner? He now has a two level lead over Bulldog. Yeah, and uh, Kellen's still being annoying, but kind of uh, losing a bit of his health bar for it. First Drake going on over to D+, plus as Trisha Barrage is going to miss, but he does land the Q, and both of those, like an ultimate and a Q, the Q does about the same amount of damage uh, here on the Ezreal, so that's just totally fine. Uh, Kingen going to uh, at least spot that Cuz took some grubs. 
All three of them going on over to the Zac to start this one up. So bottom side belonging to D+. Plus. Top side, though, is secured here by Quantum Freaks. And Lucy just continuing to farm things out. And we're otherwise not going to have too much of a kerfuffle in the early phase. It was like a pseudo lane swap, like an almost lane swap, and then not really a lane swap. Yeah, they were just kind of toying with the idea. It almost looked like they didn't really know where to go and then finally settled uh, as Kingen's going to miss a cannon. And that is because Kuz was making his way over. Good self-control there from the Lee Sin. He may not have seen the cannon as well. Yeah, he, he sensed it. He is Lee Sin though. Um, so that would make some sense. Now see Andal making a move up here. And Kellen's a bit late, so they should just be able to get this blue disengaged from the situation. Lucy's gonna obviously spot that it's gone, but can't really do anything about it. Yep. Um, Quantum Freak's making some good moves there. It's a weird timing uh, to get that Andal roam up because there aren't really, there's not really anything else to, to look for outside of the enemy blue buff. Uh, but they are at least going to be able to grab that. Showmaker also um, back towards his uh, tank Azir ways. He did uh, deviate when we did see a fair bit of grasp Azir uh, from other players, like uh, BDD, for example. Uh, Showmaker was still playing like play footwork and stuff like that. Um, but this time around, he is uh, committed. Yeah, I wonder how tank he'll go, because the popular thing has been grasp and then kind of like the bruisery build. Yep. But he's into a very AD heavy team composition with 280 carries. I could see him going back to like the frozen heart we saw. Uh, yeah. When we first brought it out, we'll get we'll get to see, you know, what he wants to opt for. It definitely makes you so durable into a composition like this. Uh, and with an Ezreal on your team, you're never lacking for damage. And uh, yeah, aiming not lacking for damage either is actually able to hit it onto Andil. As True Shot Barrage does fly forward. Showmaker is just kind of dominating uh, this mid lane. Every time we see it, he's getting further and further ahead. Elastic Slingshot being charged, but Showmaker, I think, knows exactly what's going on. Shifts the sands, gets himself out. So Kuz not going to yeah. be successful on that first gank. This is my concern about the Zac pick, is who are you going to jump on? And who are you Come realistically going to be able to, to get on top of? Well, Lucid is now here, and so Kuz going to have to back away. So Kuz goes for the Stretch Armstrong, even and he does have stretchy arms, but that's uh, that's all he's going to demonstrate. Yeah, even Karma, you know, can speed herself up, and it's oh, that's pretty, true. pretty tricky to pin down. Is Lee Sin mobile? Oh well, yeah, I guess um, kind of is. A he? little bit. Yeah, a little bit mobile. So Lucid's also mobile. He's going to have to flash out of the way as uh, Kuz is bouncing. Not sure what the game plan was there from Lucid. He, like, gets into the, the yeah. wolf pit, and it's like... I'm here. Ha-ha! Yeah. Didn't yeah. Really think it through. No, I uh, I was a bit perplexed myself. That's fine. I like the gusto. As Showmaker. It's cool. He forced Bulldog to come over, and maybe he missed like a couple of CS on the wave. So I that was the strategy. Causing Bulldog to miss CS is not something they've been struggling with. <laughs> As Lucid is going to get out of the way of the Elastic Slingshot once again. Ha, mobility. Yeah. Showmaker's Still... going to get his third plate. Well, mid's going badly. Um, at least top is going okay so far. We haven't really seen Lucid, King, and set up this duo um, in the top side, partially due to the lane shenanigans. It looks like the focus now is towards the bot lane. As Andal's going to go in. Some Ws landing here. As in goes the Elastic Slingshot once again. Glacial Prison goes down, though, as Kuz. He's getting smaller and smaller, and he will be divided cellularly. As Aiming's going to be able to take this last one. There it goes. First blood onto the Zac. And we're still perplexed as to why it was picked. Yeah. Oh, Leap is going to have to flash. And also going to have to flash. That is a scary piggy. And D+, plus. They, I, I mean, that's just winning bottom lane, right? Yeah, I think, look, sometimes in a game, there, there's power picks. We always know there's power picks that are in the meta that are really hard to deal with. And sometimes, like, look, we'll leave it open because we got an answer. But never would I thought the answer to Ezreal would have been Zac. And I think it's apparent I just don't see how he's supposed to connect these, these, like, you know, we find the engage here, he comes in a range, but they've already disengaged. Lucid's there to interrupt him, and then they just turn around and kill him. Yeah. Like, so I don't even think D plus did anything particularly complicated here. They just played their champions. <laughs> they did. And they did it well. They, they hit did the do it abilities. Well, but it wasn't, you know, oh, well, there's an arrow on the Lucid. He has Frost Armor, so he keeps himself alive for quite some time, but still he's going to go down. Bulldog collects that kill. The first one for Quantum Freaks goes to the Zeri. That is good news. As now King in looking for an angle, misses the Q, though, onto Andal, so he's not getting in there. Quantum Freaks now looking for six grubs as well, and if they can lock this down, 
will be great for them, but there is a Hextech Drake alive as well. Could be the trade here for D+, plus as now King and Showmaker with some free time in this mid lane, and there is only a couple of plates left in this turret. Uh, also this turret. Um, yeah. Yeah, they've not doing well in the plate department. The fancy fancy plates have kind of been smashed already for Quandor Freaks. They've got to get out like the reserve ones. Yeah, a bit of a Greek <laughs> wedding. It's uh, all right, Dudu just going to be snagged by a Q, but otherwise he should be okay. Decent Narbar positioning there as well, as uh, now aiming getting in amongst it. The Manganar will be coming in. The W comes down, True Shot Barrage is there, and Dudu is, is now just stranded. There's the Q. And uh, you saw the True Shot Barrage damage, right? Yeah, it was about the same as that Q. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Triforce already completed for this Ezreal. Um, you know, we've seen Ezreal, when he falls behind, he gets these items and he's still such a menace. But when an Ezreal has 140 CS at 13 minutes, two kills and a full tower worth of plates, it's not going to be a fun time for Quandon Freaks. Do you think that aiming might get the most gold this game? Is Bulldog's just going to come over and execute Kellen? I'm not sure what Kellen's idea was there, but Lucid's going to come on in. Bulldog? Getting it flashed on by aiming the last couple of autos are going to do it. He just stands his ground. He wanted Cuz to come over to him. The Strex Armstrong comes through, and the arrow is going to sail into the Sejuani. And Showmaker's here, guys. So I don't think the Quandong Freaks are going to be able to answer back too much. So Bulldog will be executed, aiming, grabbing even more gold. Our Uribank Gold, gold King, um, I think, will be officially crowned. Wasn't he? He was already, already officially, officially yeah. crowned. And so he's going to be more than officially crowned as the Mega Gold King of the Year. Does he become like the, the Gold Emperor after some point? Does it keep ascending? You yeah, know? maybe he just goes up the ranks. Yeah. Um, he is going to be the uh, the, the uni universe dominator of the gold. Yeah. It's like um, it's like when you're a kid and it's like, oh, you know, well, I'm the king, and then you have to one off, you know, in the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. arguments. He just keeps going to go further. Oh, TP Plant coming in. All right. From King in. Let's see whether King can actually find a good kick angle here as Cuz is going to get spotted on that control ward. There is the delivery of Leaper, and he's Ash. He doesn't have flash. He's not getting out of this one. It's now Bulldog. He might get sent over the wall, and he will. King in has his waiting arms there, and that is going to be the Tempest to take him down. Oh, man, D-plus just kind of turning it on. One of the beautiful things with Lee Sin top lane is that you just get a TP into a flank angle. Lee Sin jungle never gets to do that. Yeah. So comes straight in, gets a beautiful kick on a Leaper, and uh, things quickly falling apart for the Pondon Freaks. Some autoing, some good autoing. Just tanks the Zac combo. It's like, I've already got the Triforce self, I'm fine. Yeah. He finds W, finds a whole bunch of extra damage. Just tells him to get out of there, and now we're going to check out King and flank angle. This was beautifully done. A little bit of a reposition there with the safeguard. That was slick. Yeah. That was pretty slick. You know, I feel like moments like that, you can definitely tell he's practiced the pick. He wanted to bring it out. Oh, yeah. Um, like I, I said, 100% win rate. Yeah, the shuffle into King and's uh, waiting arms. And Kellen's taking the blob for a walk. As, uh, when a Karma can sort of walk into the enemy jungle with impunity, that's when you know things are going well for the Karma's team. Wow, look at that uh, gold lead between the 80 carries. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. That's well, weird. Is that, is that a thing that aiming often does? Well, at least it's only a pick like Ezreal. You haven't seen him be that strong with Wade. Walking into the enemy jungle with impunity. Maybe not the right move, but the Glacial Prison goes down. Now it's King and finding the angle. True Shot Barrage connects and takes out the Ash. And so they'll trade 80 carry. Oh, and jungle perhaps. There's the safeguard kick. And the Cell Division is going to once again be taken out. There it is. Kill goes over to aiming, as of course it does. Aiming now going to reposition. Great toggle on the vision from Jonah Strong there as well as Andal's going to be wiped out. And yeah, D, D plus should not get Ezreal, guys. Yeah, I'm glad we're learning this new information that yeah. Ezreal's app should be banned. Oh, he's top on damage dealt. He's top on kills. He's top on gold in. You know what? He would want saving grace is that he had so much gold, his mana immune isn't stacked, right? By the time he bought it. Normally, like, you see people finish off as fully stacked. It's like, okay, it's go time. Nope, still not stacked. He's just that fed. He hasn't had time. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. yeah, so Kellen, 
the worthy sacrifice, I guess. Yeah, and then this ult, the Q ult, the damage that did <laughs> is just a little bit ridiculous. And that wasn't even W empowered. No. Oh, God. No, just, just yeah. Yeah, King in finding another really nice angle there as Aiming clears up that kill and the Arcane Shift gets him into the darkness as we saw thanks to Jonah Strong and Dudu not going to be able to do anything. Lucid just there to play Bouncer. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, it oh. is now a uh, 4,000 gold lead. Yeah, in, in the AD carry roll or overall? And look at this from Showmaker as well. He was listening to you, my friend. Oh yeah, he saw the... So, okay, so now you have Kingen, who's mobile and he's going to be a bruiser. Lucid is a tank. Showmaker is a tank. Kellen, you can kill him. He's just going to die. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that already. Yeah. And Aiming, who's playing a super fed Ezreal, who's going to be incredibly hard to pin down. Well, I think it might be a tough ask if Kwanong Freaks win this game. Yeah. I think... As Andal might be caught out because he's going to be there. He does rocket his way over. There's a really nice Mikhail's from Kellen, though, as Aiming, he's just raining the damage down. He doesn't even need to press an ult button because he's just going to kill everyone. Lucid trying to get himself out of there, but that's a triple kill for Aiming. It's going to be a Quadra. He's hitting everything as well. There's that Quadra kill that we were talking about. Kingen's dead. Um, but now Dudu is just trying to walk his way out. Lucid they might just Penta. sacrifice himself for the will of the Penta. And uh, yeah, the thumbs up comes through, so I don't think uh, Dudu's going to be dying. So just going to have to be aiming, settling for a Quadra kill. 9-0-1 yeah, I mean, on the Ezreal. Thank God for that. I think if Dudu had gone down there and had gotten the Penta, I think this game would have been completely over. Whereas now, it's the game completely is... completely over. <laughs> 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 I did like your angle, though. That was almost a glass half full. Uh, all right, Showmaker realizing that he's going to have to try and vacate the area. Teleport to come through onto the Sun Disk, but Showmaker does not have very much. Oh, as, oh my goodness, the safeguard was so good. Not going to quite be enough, though. Now King is going to get rammed into the wall and destroyed. This Sun Disk is uh, getting a lot of work done, though. Oh, so this congratulations for that. And uh, the aiming val values coming in as well. Just throws the ultimate into Narnia because sometimes you have to let them uh, survive. Yeah. Um, you want to play the game for as long as possible. Well, you know, it's like, please don't surrender. I'm having a good time. Exactly. You've just gotten this fed. You've got your items. You want to pop off. It's a nice uh, Mikhail's cleanser from uh, Kel and the self cleanse. Oh, uh, even hits that, uh, that Q onto the Zac who is trying to get on over. Penta. Penta, Penta. Such an aiming move, immediately arcing ships over, zero hesitation. Oh yeah. Wait, and uh, solo wait, killed the Dude. solo bolo. We might need a replay to explain that one. Although yeah. Dudu was very low. Wow, that's uh, uh, a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, well, that's a, it's a really nice cleanse from aiming. Let's see whether he can keep himself alive as, uh, all right, oh, they're gonna get crashed into by Shelly as the solo killing monster Lucid just comes on over. He's gonna get another charge now that's here as engaged. well. That was gorgeous. We thought that Peanuts drifting past the turret was cool. That was cooler. That's the double headbutt. D plus are now taking an inhibitor at 20 minutes into the game. We want to remind everyone as well that this was our longest game of the season. Last time these two teams met, uh, we broke that record. And now, yeah, this one's over at 21 minutes. An absolute shellacking, just true domination. And Dudu is just going to get stunned in the air. Showmaker getting a bit confused and thrown around, but he's not taking very much damage. Emperor's Divide gets rid of the Zac. True Shot Barrage is flying through as well. It is very early in this game, and the health bars are going exceptionally low. But the Cell Division comes through once again. D plus, they are so low. And now they're going to have to try and get out. The Extendo Beam, let's see whether that can get the work done. I can hear the Kwanong Freaks fans. They are going ballistic as aiming. He has to dodge it. He finds the kill. And now, I, Lucid, you're going to have to get out of there, buddy. I don't think this one's happening. But still, I think the message has been received. Um, aiming's real. I mean, just shut down. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. The they, they still have a whole nexus left in their base. That's oh. true. There's also a ward on it. <laughs> um, there are no teleports available. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, they're getting a mountain dragon. You know. Um, 
Well, maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. That Lee Sin Q is not from a Lee Sin that can actually smite. So that's okay. It's not going to cost them. And now, it's a big comeback. All the gold is only on one person. I feel like if Ezreal was in this game... How many I'd... cleanses does aiming need, by the way? Uh, all of them. Okay. Um, I would be feeling a lot more optimistic about the chances of Quantum Freaks if this was any other AD carry in the entire game. Even Zeri. I actually even think, like, Zeri would probably still be over, but I'd feel better about it. He even got the auto attack off. What a boring game. <laughs> 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 he's like, he's locking in Lee Sin. It's like, it's my time to shine. He gets swapped on, and then he, yeah. you know, he got that cool kick, I guess. He did get a cool kick, but he really wanted to do some more stuff that was, like, going to be game-changing. And unfortunately, uh, aiming is kind of... Uh, Playing Ezreal. Yeah, he's doing the main character thing. Yeah, he's uh, doing a lot of Ezrealing. And, and now know, he's got Cleanse, QSS, and Mikhail's. Oh. oh, yeah. I think he needed all of those, yep. certainly. Just um, so that he can Arcane Shift forward as much as he likes. Yep. He will never be CC'd. And although he will be CC'd for a great many days. Uh, aiming going to be able to find it there as the Arcane Shift's over. Let's bounce oh, comes kick. on through. That's a beautiful kick onto Bulldog. And it's another double here as Aiming looks for it. He actually thought that he just killed Leaper there. He did. And he did! Because the red buff finishes him off. He also takes down the cannon. That's very important. Dudu running for the hills because he knows that's what he has to do. Just avoid giving quadras and pentas to Aiming. And that is going to be precisely what he's going to do. Dudu and Cuz now on the fountain. The Nexus is in trouble. The flash forward from Lucid. And Aiming still trying to find a few of these, but I don't think he's going to be getting a penta because the game is over, ladies and gentlemen. D+, plus. they got Ezreal. Yeah, sometimes games like these need to happen so we can learn, right? All the viewers... That the was the last series as well. We learned a lot. Exactly, and we learned from this that you should ban Ezreal. And that was new information that we didn't know before. I think before this, we were a little bit uncertain. Um, I don't think anyone's really commented on the strength of Ezreal. I think it's kind of been yeah. flown under the radar. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now, I think it's it's so easy to say, particularly against players who are proficient on it, like aiming. I I I'm gonna say this, Mike. This is crazy. I think you you have to ban Ezreal. Whoa! Wow. So you're saying that maybe the LeBlanc ban didn't need to be. No, the LeBlanc ban was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. But I think you you need to find something and go. You know what? We don't need all these bans. We need to find an Ezreal ban somewhere. Um, because honestly, I mean, there was a lot of issues in the game. I feel like some things went wrong. The swap, I think, was navigated better by D+. But, yep. uh, huh. I, I don't know what else to, you know, sometimes like dam damages and everything, but sometimes it is. That's, that's basically quadruple the damage of Leaper. Yeah. So I'm going to say that that's in the pros column for D+. I think Aiming had a pretty good one. I think he might be getting POG for this game, but I also think the Quanong Freaks will relish the chance to move over to the blue side and avoid this first pick Ezreal thing from happening again. We're going to go to a short break. When we get back, the space is going to break that down. We're going to have game two. See you there.
레어나 보자 레어나 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 아, 아래? 포스? 포스! 아래? 아, 이니시 보여줄게 아, 이니시 큐 플레이 자 밀어야 될것 같아 제코스 <웃음> And play professionally afterwards Which oh. is pretty cool, pretty fun we'll, uh, You'll have to check out replay to see whether he is at the level As we will dive into this draft We have LeBlanc and Vi both banned away Remember Quantum Freaks, they're on the blue side. And so we can have the same bands, and then they pick the Ezreal, and everything's fine. Yep, they'll just handshake it, and D plus will be like, let's not ban Ezreal. I mean, to be fair, you know, I, I think there are things that can make Ezreal harder to play, and there is Zac. <laughs> so yeah. I think if they leave Ezreal open, I don't expect D plus to pick Zac into it, but this is an Ezreal first pick for Quantum Freaks. And now we get to see what D-plus will go in Zian. So we've seen Aiming uh, play the Ash. We had one really good game on it, one not so good game on it. Been a bit hit or miss, but it's definitely been what people have responded to into the Ezreal when they have left it open, as we saw in the last game. Uh, gonna prioritize. No more Lee Sin. Ooh, Renekton Nidalee. Renekton Nidalee. No more Lee Sin, though. No more fun uh, for King. Well, I guess Kingen probably enjoys playing Renekton. So. How do you know that Kingen's gonna play Renekton? Oh, true. How do we know? We don't. We never know. I lost my hair to a Showmaker Renekton performance. Um, but that was with a Nidalee. It wasn't piloted by Lucid. Lucid. Lucid is now hovering by his own volition. Yeah, he's asking, can I have fun? And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 you have to pick Sejuani. And he's like, you know what? I'll just pick Ash. I won't even pick my jungler yet. Um, Ash going to come out for aiming in this situation. And on red side, you have that counter pick potential. You know, we saw the Leona Ash into the Karma Ezreal not really pop off. Um, not really able to find too much presence in that lane, so hopefully they do something different to try and ensure that Aim and Kellen have a good matchup in the Ezreal. And Cuz looks like he wants to deny the Nidalee away. That is what he's going to do. We'll see what they pair it with, because if this is Nidalee Corky, I'm going to feel less enthused. <laughs> um, and it is going to be Nidalee Corky. All the skill shots, you know? Yeah. If all of them fire skill shots at the same time in slight, slightly offset from each other, how can you dodge them all? That's true. One of them will land. Um, that is going to be the Leona lock. I like that. So uh, it will secure some of those skill shots with the CC. As well, Leona really strong. The thing is, though, it does expose you to a potential counter pick. Kellen could whip out the Renata. Or, you know, Alistair's also a good matchup, but he's had some good games on that. But maybe they're just going to leave that until later. Uh, and it looks like they're opting instead for the Viego, potentially. I think that could certainly lead towards some bans on things like the Ari. No, nope, like be... But instead, the Renata. Yeah, Kellen Renata. He's been pretty uh, insane on this pick. And also the Ash Renata. A very suffocating lane to play into as a melee support. You know, if you... Oh, yeah. It, unless you can go in and 100% kill them, and it may come down to one missed Ezreal Q will be the difference maker. If you're not able to do that, then you're just getting harassed constantly throughout that time. Now, Baron's coming through. Jack's been denied, so D plus not allowing uh, Dudu to play that pick that people often like to take in a Renekton, because you can just block his stun. Sejuani ban coming through, and no Renekton Sejuani for Lucid. I would assume that perhaps a Nar ban comes in second for D plus. I think it kind of depends what your game plan is, because if your game plan is to heavily pressure top, you could punish the Gnar. That is you know? true. Um, whereas something like Poppy. Poppy would be a lot harder to punish. It kind of feels like they're, they're getting rid of picks that can just soften Renekton and hold him back. I feel like the Gnar pick would be pretty dangerous. I mean, especially with Cassante also banned away as well. feels like they want to set up some easy dives to the top side. Well, I could imagine that Lucid is pretty happy because the Sejuani is banned and so is the Maokai. So we might have to play something that's actually somewhat enjoyable, which uh, I think would be very cool. Uh, Corky going to be locked in first, though, for Showmaker. That is going to deny the wo the wombo combo of the, the Nidalee Corky. All of that setup and power 
is no longer there for Bulldog and Cuz. Yeah, I uh, wonder if Bulldog's just going to pick out another AD carry in the mid lane. But actually, this could be a flex. And they put the Ezreal Maiden take the Ziggs in the bot lane? That would be better than Ziggs Nidalee. I feel like that's not a thing. I think that's what they're going for here. I kind of um, like it. Ziggs into a mobile champions as well. You just do the little alley-oop with the ultimate. If Leona hits any CC, you have that poke. Very poke-heavy composition. And the thing is, D-plus... So far, don't really have much engage other than the Ash Arrow, which can be cleansed. Looks like Wonder Freaks are going to lean towards the Gnar, though. You don't know the jungle pick. You know you're into Renekton. This could be a bit of a danger point for Doodoo. It but it uh, looks like he is feeling confident with, with it, and we'll lock it in. What kind of uh, magic damage-based jungler is Lucid going to... Shivana. Watch uh, it. It's going to happen. Yeah, I I don't think this is a great Shivana composition, but we'll see. Oh, Zyra would be better. It's, it doesn't feel like a Lucid champion, but we are going to lock it in. You know? And so now you've got Zyra Corky, which is a lot of damage, especially in the mid game. And the setup for the Zyra's Grasping Roots can actually be pretty strong with the Renekton. Well, so this good angle. Ziggs Ezreal's going because they're kind of... I don't want the Ziggs to be mid. Yeah. I think, I think that that would be mid. You know, I feel like there's a lot of strong picks. Like, I think Ziggs into what D-plus have is good. I think Ezreal into what D-plus have is good. But I think the cohesion for Condom Freaks, uh, you know, make me a little bit hesitant. But I think D-plus key, I'm a little bit concerned about them closing the gap onto the composition of Condom Freaks. You know, they, they kind of lack engage outside of the Ash Arrow. And especially if people have cleanses, if people have... Uh, ways of getting away from it, you might just be receiving a ton of poke without really a great response. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how Quantum Freaks are going to be able to play this one out, though, because it is a very different look. They do have the Ezreal themselves, which is definitely a good thing. It was something that Leaper was really leaning on earlier in the season. Uh, finds some decent angles on this champion. We wouldn't put him up there with our top Ezreal players. We have quite a few of them here in the LCK, especially with the... Uh, uh, quite meteoric rise of pays on his uh, Ezreal as well, but he might be challenging for fifth, uh, which would be pretty good, uh, considering the amount of players that are very, very good at it. But this is also a terrifying uh, composition if you are to get into a team fight with them having control of an area. We'll see how we go. We jump into the rift. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be a Hallow's End Zyra skin as well. It's been a while since we've seen that one. Little gravestones that you can put up. Pretty cute. Pretty nifty. I think the thing I'm really concerned here for Quantum Freaks is you have a Nidalee, and we've seen, you know, King and Pile of Renekton pretty well in the top lane against Nars. The bot lane is double ranged against ranged melee. The mid lane is Corky against not Corky and not Lucian. <laughs> um, so I feel like Cuz, you can see already so much aggression from D+. Plus. I think Cuz might have a bad time. And I think this is kind of part of the issue that Quantum Freaks have had is when it comes to mid jungle duos, combinations, you think that makes sense. I can see why you put those two champions together. They don't really have that. It's like Bulldog likes, you know, he does like his AD carries, but, you know, he'll also lean on those mages. And then Cuz is like, I want to play Nidalee. Yeah. Um, but if they navigate the early game well, if they manage to, to get through the laning phase okay, I do think that the poke trio is going to be hard for D-plus to, to deal with. But that's the big question. They are going to go for a lane swap, which I think makes complete sense in this situation. Let's hope. We've seen some rough lane swaps, I'd say, recently, where you, know, you understand why the teams are trying to do it, you understand what they're going for, and then the execution is just a million miles off. Yeah, it doesn't quite work. Thankfully, there's no Ivern in this game, um, so we can't get sad about that. Um, with the camps it's being uh, just, just, just brutally taken down, as yeah. I thought the spear was about to hit Dudu. It I was just a friendly saw. spear. Andal is zero six on Leona, and Cuz is five and zero oh on Nidalee. So, which is stronger? Well, the zero six is more, but yeah. Um, ooh, that One is of the streaks is being ended. Exactly. Let's see whether it's the positive. Or the negative. As uh, already, a bit of a shove being uh, set up here. Of course, we know that uh, in the top lane, you're not likely to get too many plates. 
because of all of the protection for the turret. Still, they're going to be able to get all of this uh, experience off the map and go for a little bit of a, a, a transition back with a couple of levels under their belt, which is going to feel a little bit better. Demolish, though, for Kellen means that they're going to be doing a fair bit of work to this uh, bottom out of turret. Yep. As you should be in this situation, when you want the 2v2 bot, you got to expect there's a potential uh, swap coming in, and the Demolish makes a big difference in taking that. So we see that the essential takeaway is they, they dip out and avoid the rough early levels. Um, but in terms of catching XP, Kingen is going to get a lot here. Yeah. We'll be able to get a lot of the XP. These minions are in really uh, awkward ranges uh, as far as actually being able to pick up the last hits. You know, King is level 3, and Dudu's still, he's just now hit level 2. So that hasn't panned out. They've lost two plates, but... So it's 400 gold is kind of the sacrifice here for getting Leaper and Andal out of this early game. And we'll have to see whether that is actually going to be okay, because we do know that, I mean, Ash Renata sounds like a horrible thing to deal with even now. Um, but at level 1, it is also pretty terrible. Yeah. I'm just concerned about the impact that's happened top lane with uh, King and getting so much XP on the back of that TP. Sometimes it can be a bit risky TPing in there. Uh, if they're waiting to, to punish, we've seen that time and time before. You TP and instantly get dove. But the setup wasn't there. And as a result, he really got rewarded for that and has an entire level lead over Dudu. And now they're setting this up with a big wave crash. You can see Kuz is running over. If Dudu gets dove here, his game is over. Yeah, he's still level two. Level four here for King, and yeah, he needs this wave. He absolutely needs this wave. And there's the flash forward. Graspy Roots comes in. This is exactly what we were talking about. As the spear is going to connect onto King and the dash forward, Cuz gets a little bit back. And there is a teleport to come through here. Lucid could be in trouble as Cuz gets the flash out. The spear needs to land. It does not. So Kuz going to have to back away still. Big, big answer there as Dudu is able to teleport back and pick up most of this wave. Yep, I think the big thing is Kuz being there allows him to TP back in, doesn't get redove. Kingen and Lucid are forced away and Kuz getting a kill. And now he can get some damage on Showmaker. Yep, Spear is going to miss though. So uh, Kuz going to have to hop over the wall. But Showmaker follows him. He does have very little of the blue stuff. But uh, Kuz just gets over that wall, primarily surges himself back up to somewhat of a health bar, and we'll just go back home. Ooh, looking for a spear. That's going to stop the back of Showmaker. Kind of annoying. And actually, Bulldog gets some time on the tower. He should just... I'm not sure if he can get a full play here, but if he gets the Empowered Orphan, the tower actually does so much. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I can definitely prep it for later. And I feel like in games with the Ziggs, it doesn't matter which lane's tower, but you want a tower to get low so you can just walk over and satchel it. And yeah, I mean, this was a good setup from, from D+. But unfortunately, King and flashes in, does the double roll to just burst him, and then the minion block means he eats the spear. Yeah, that was actually follow up. pretty tragic, because if that spear what? doesn't land, then Kuz doesn't get any of this. With the TP, it doesn't end up being too bad for Dudu, and the fact that they're forced away. So Kuz getting there in time to recover the play. And honestly, I think with how bad top was, I think it's actually panned out better now for Dudu. Oh, much better. And he's now ahead in farm. We'll be uh, crashing a wave in, so King and should be able to answer that. But the fact that the levels are not completely skewed like they were before is certainly good news. Uh, speaking of which, Dudu throwing some boomerangs around and trying to get some hyper procs as we've got Lucid securing these grubs. King and should be able to hold this wave into a pretty decent position for himself. That's certainly good news on that top side as Aiming and Kellen have been a little quiet. You can see that. Uh, the Ezreal doing a pretty good job as far as uh, lane is concerned. It's actually ahead in farm by just a little bit. We'll yeah. be even when this uh, this wave is equalized. And that's the sort of situation that you get from uh, basically doing the swap of all nearly levels. It can be really advantageous and just give you a lot more breathing room because I think champions like Leona, level three, I mean, even level two, but normally what happens in like a standard lane playing out you don't get to touch the wave early because it's double ranged and they're so strong, Ash and Renata. And then they get level three when you get, uh, unfortunately misses. Well, they get level right. three when you're still level one in the tower. And if you get dove, the game is just over. Whereas level three, for the Leona, you're such a threat. Um, if Kellen missteps, he will just die. Well, didn't miss, misstep that time around. As Dudu still has flash, there's a Stranglethorn. Oh, the plant is one up and the plant gives him the hop. Oh no. That was
was Massive beautiful. Backfire there. I think Judy was just hoping for the best, thinking maybe I'll have to flash, and then the plant appears and gives him the little trampoline bounce to get away. Yeah, wow. That's uh, well played by Dudu, but a little bit unfortunate there for Lucid. And so he's not going to be able to get too much. Of course, he's still leading as far as uh, camp's concerned in the jungle. So the Zyra doing what it says on the tin, but still wants to be able to try and fight uh, in this top lane a little bit more than they are. This Renekton wanting to get value so that uh, King can be that big front line later in the game. As we know that Renekton, if he's behind, really just doesn't feel like he does very much at all. It's okay. Solar Flare this time not going to really connect his handle. Takes a big journey under the turret, but it's Kellen that's going to be the one that receives the death. And Kwandong Freaks, they move to two versus one in those kill scores. This bottom lane going way better. Nice setup there from Andal. This is the danger. You know, you're playing Renata Ash, but the Ash is the one with the cleanse. Renata doesn't have that summoner. You're a vulnerable target, and the damage, the burst from Leona Ezreal is just absurd in our uh, level six in particular. Beautifully done. And so now the 2v2 working out very well for Quantum Freaks. They're already putting on a fair bit of pressure. I think Cuz getting that kill, big deal for him as we check it out one more time. Yep, and I think Kellen should have just flashed uh, the ult initially, but was like, you know, he dodged it, didn't get stunned, but it was the slow was enough for Andal to follow up. And I love that Andal immediately flashed out to avoid the return kill. As uh, Kingen going a little aggressive here. We'll be able to eat most of the wave uh, with that Cull the Meek. We'll just head back. Just wanted to put on as much pressure as he possibly could. Successful in uh, that regard. He still has a decent CS lead. This game is so much closer than what we saw in game number one. Only 400 gold in it, but there, there is a Drake over to Quantum Freaks. And honestly, I think if Quantum Freaks aren't behind at this point, I think they're pretty comfortable. They also early Ocean Dragon one of the best in the game. Oh, nice. Nice handshake. Trisha Barrage. Not surprised. Spear almost hits. Not surprised when it's Kellen. His handshakes have been super good. But early Ocean Dragon, so powerful in the laning phase. Definitely one of the dragons that falls off pretty hard. But getting one while you're still actually in the lanes can make such a big difference. Just that extra sustain. Um, Showmaker is pretty confident on Corky. Uh, we have known uh, known him as a Corky player for quite some time. Not necessarily as much as, you know, uh, players like Chovy, for example, this season. But certainly was one of the early adopters of the Corky. So it's good to see him uh, playing with the confidence Man, that we're used to seeing. Beautiful walk strategy there from Dudu. Yeah. Um, this is, it's getting a little bit rough for Bulldog in the mid lane. And now Lucid set up for something here in this top side of the map. Yeah, it's close to Mega, so this is risky. Well, they're going to do it again. Stranglethorns does come in as Dudu gets the Nara into the wall. Kingen is going to tank that last turret shot. Lucid tries to get in front, but it's just not going to be enough. And now, Kuz looking to transition to another kill this time, as the screw is not going to quite connect there. Lucid going to flash as now looks for the return, but doesn't quite get there. Kuz throws out a uh, optimistic spear. And now Leaper doesn't have the ultimate, so isn't going to be out of fish. Once again, a beautiful read from Kurz on the timing. Where the dive is being set up, able to make the counterplay. And due to unfortunately getting knocked up by the Strangle Thorns, meant he couldn't immediately stun King in. But it didn't matter. Kurz is still there to clean up. Can't take down Lucid once again, but they will definitely be happy with the outcome there. And now, Bundar Freaks are setting up on this top lane tower. And I would love to see Bulldog if he can make a move over. Just to satchel but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Yeah. As Arrow going to connect here on to Dudu. He has to get out. Does have to use the flash this time around. Didn't have to use it topside. I think if he did, then maybe he was just dead yeah. in that play. Thankfully, didn't have to. And so, therefore, will at least keep his life. Is now Lucid. He wants to try for it once again. Grasping Roots does go wide. The plant's getting angry. But Dudu, man, he's got some footwork today. Yeah, and it looks like E plus gonna win out on this, especially with the demolish in the bot lane, so they will be getting the first tower. Oh, yeah. so actually the Zig Zolt is yeah, the main not fight. able to get that last one, so that is first tower blood going over to D plus. Quanon Freak's gonna have to settle for second. That is going to be taken there still. I think that uh Quanon gonna be quite okay with how this game is going right now. True shot barrage sails past its teammates. And he's going to oh, be able to stop Aiming's back. Nicely done. That might be able to get them another Drake. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to recall regardless. So the setup's good. Leaper's already coming back on the map with a Triforce. Timing's pretty nice. And thanks to the people showing up mid and just helping Bulldog out, he's got the shove. 
And Showmaker, you have to defend your tower against the Ziggs. You can't give him any opportunity to free hit it or it is just gone. Yeah. Well, this is going to be just gone as well. Uh, the Drake down to about 50% right now. You can see the rotation over, but they're a little bit late. I have a feeling that DK not going to be able to quite get in here in time as Kellen takes a bouncing bomb to the Noggin. And that is going to be caused with the fadeaway. That locks down the second Drake and a Hextech Soul oh, man. this game as well. It's always a powerful soul, but with a comp like this with a lot of long range poke, suffocating. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just game is over if Pondon Freaks get it. And Ezreal stuck of the is game, pretty good. Yeah. In stock of the game, we're now at a point where Quantum Freaks have managed to navigate the lanes okay. Gold is pretty even. They have two dragons. Oh, Kellen. Yeah, that's a decent uh, handshake once again as the hostile takeover comes in. We'll see whether Kellen's going to be able to survive. And the answer is no. The bailout, it comes forward. They're trying to fight this one out as Leaper. He's going to fall. Aiming now looking to try and kite out Andal. He does use the Zenith Blade to try and close the gap, but uh, he is still very dead. And that's a double kill for Aiming Zash. Overzealous play, you know, Deepos had the backing of their jungler there. They thought Kellen was alone. And unfortunately, Cos was not on the map. So Leaper and Andal look for something, and they find far more than they bargained for. And it wasn't what they wanted. As now aiming, able to come over and collect himself a red buff before he goes back home. Just purchased his Kraken Slayer. We'll see how close to item number two he's going to be able to get off the back of this one as we check out the play once again. And you know, in this situation, if the stun connects from the ult, this play works so seamlessly because you just one-shot Kellen. He doesn't even get to pop W, but because he didn't get stunned by the initial ult, he gets the handshake, he stalls it out. The rest of the team are able to come up and they're able to get the cleanup. So good moves from Kellen, even though he goes down, he made that play work. And now TP coming through, King and Anne show making here. handle. I think they're just dead. Yeah, the double TP oh, to come forward. Mega Inferno Bomb does come down as Lucid's in so much trouble. Right in the back of the pit, there is the Na onto Showmaker as well, but Dudu's taking so much damage. Aiming is untouched. They do manage to get the Zyra, but now Aiming with that barrier is able to lock down the Ezreal Bulldog, trying to get as much damage down as he can. Kingen is fighting with the Rift Herald. Cuz is there, he's got Smite, so he'll be able to take that one out. It is a two for two in the end. Oh, two for one, actually. But they do manage to get themselves the Herald, so Quantum Freak's kind of okay with it. Very scrappy there uh, in that passage of play. D plus managed to edge out in terms of kills, but Herald goes over. We'll see what impact they can make. I think when a Ziggs is on your team, you can always get impact from a Herald. Uh, but here, the focus ends up kind of split. Lucid does get challenged here, and Andal finds this combo, but the, uh, the nullifying orb, the rune, actually keeps him alive a lot longer than you expect. The ult from Dudu doesn't quite stun Showmaker, so he gets taken down and aiming. Challenging Leaper here, walking up to the Ezreal, taking him out. And even though everyone's low, in these situations when they're running away, it's quite hard to land those Qs on the Zig, so not able to clean up there. D plus now with a slight gold lead, but Herald in pocket for Quantum Freaks to get some value from. I think honestly, mid, you throw it down there and you satchel, it is gone. I would agree. I think this is uh, its a big moment for Quantum Freaks. I think that if they can keep things in order, they should be okay. But the fact that Aiming and Showmaker are still absolutely huge in this game, it's a scary prospect. Yeah, and as well, Quantum Freaks, their team fights are so skill shot reliant. Oh, you know, yeah. You could easily see a team fight just completely imploding simply because, you know, Bulldog missed a Q or Leaper did. Um, so definitely a high skill cap composition they are playing right now. And they really have to be consistent on what they're connecting with. Because if they don't, Showmaker and Naming, they will just auto you down. We'll see whether they get the opportunity to do so. Because I also think that having a Zyra there can be pretty devastating as well. You were mentioning that this mid lane turret could certainly be pretty close to death. It's not quite in range. As Arrow going to connect onto the Ziggs. There's the flash forward. Stranglethorns goes down, but the satchel is gorgeous. And Bulldog's able to get himself out with the help of his flash as well. One minute on this Dragon, and that means that Bulldog will not have the Flash available for that fight. It is a trade of Flashes, though, and I think, you know, you can play Ziggs at such a long range. Lucid is going to have to push up. He is Flashless. If they connect the Leona ult onto Lucid, we could just see Bulldog throwing the ult on top of him again. He could be taking out the fight extremely quickly. But so we'll have to does Azira care if she dies, as long as she gets off the ultimate? Well, that's the thing. They have to try and make sure she, she dies before she gets the ultimate off. Aha! But I think in terms of securing the dragon, you're going to struggle without your Zyra. That is a very good point. Uh, Aiming now has his Phantom Dancer completed. That's what he's opted in for. We've seen a few static shivs. 
It's a big uh, spike. But it's, uh, yeah, two items. Leaper's not quite at his time spike. Neither is Showmaker, to be fair, but Aiming definitely feeling very strong right now around this objective. And 10 seconds until that one is going to be up and available. Soul Point will be huge for Quantum Freaks if they can get it. And D+, plus, this vision so incredibly, incredibly important uh, because they need to try and deny being fish in a barrel. And Kellen going to get hit by that spear. And Cuz, I mean, he's a big deal. He's 2-0-1. Leandri's already in hand. He's got a Hextech cookie as well. And they've started off this dragon. Let's see whether Cuz can actually land a couple of spears to try and get on over here. They wanted to take down this Rift Scuttler. You can see D-plus Showmaker playing Bouncer. The arrow is going to fly in. A bit of a zoning arrow there, actually kind of working out. But Bulldog's going to take this turret in the top side. And the Zig's getting so much value. Outer goes down in mid as well. Absolutely worth yeah, here I, for Quantum Freak. I think it's the right decision. You know, you, you have your Ezreal just shy of that big spike you want to play around. You've seen aiming, so it's got some massive items. Why rush it? You have the two dragon advantage. You can get that top lane tier two, get a ton of gold on your zigs. You can get that mid lane tier one. Structurally, the map is so heavily in favor of Quandron Freaks now with those extra tower pickups. And also, your mid tier one is healthy and you have a zigs Ezreal on your team. That thing is not going to go down easy. Oh no. I think Quandron Freaks made the right call. Yes, they could have risked it on the fight. But as you said, you know, very skill shot relied. If you miss execute, that could just be the game. They took the sure fire play. I like it. Aiming now, parking himself in mid, but doesn't have the safety of that outer turret, so you can see he has to back away quite a distance to make sure that he's safe. Showmaker farming with these rockets on the top side. At least Bulldog's not going to have free time with the inhibitor turret. That is certainly good. But Quantum Freak's in a fair bit of control, even yeah. though the gold is completely even. We're ticking over 20 minutes into the game, and it is 34k apiece. Oh, King is on this flank angle. Hasn't been spotted aiming. He's going to look for an arrow. Eventually, they end up not going for it. Cleanse available on Leaper does make it hard. I think Leaper's backing now for the Man Immune Spike. is fully stacked. Bulldog, very close to Horizon Focus, second item. These are some big item spikes you can definitely play around. Arrow comes through. Yeah, it's going to connect onto the Flashless Zig. Sidestep from Lucid. He finds the Grasping Root. Stranglethorns, but he gets the Satchel off. Of large damage from that uh, Mega Inferno Bomb, but now the flash forward from Showmaker. Can he get it? Yes, he can. And that is going to be some revenge there for Showmaker from the mid lane. And 2 0 1 now on this Corky. He'll go back, he'll get that Mirror Mana or the Mana Mute because uh, <laughs> that tier is not quite stacked up yet. Oh, he's been through Sharp Barrage. Yeah. I will it's say the Riot though. Games logo. Against Azira, you always have to be a little bit concerned, like, oh, could they could they baron off the back of this? But Showmaker solo on mana, so much damage done. Actually, they're starting this up, but they are gonna get spotted. Yeah, it should shot. be enough to force them off in. That being said, they're still going. They know Lucid is low and he wouldn't have had time to back. But I think this is too risky. Yeah, they, they do force get themselves out of it. They force a TP. They can be happy they got something out of it. But yeah, I think ultimately Showmaker being solo on mana, uh, and Lucid so low on health meant that there was no chance D-plus could get anything off the back of that kill. It was just an end, a kill. Yep. Uh, so Quantum Freak's not too upset about that one going down. Bit of a gnar there from Dudu, who does have a couple of waves of a lead over King in here, as far as the farm is concerned. Haven't seen too much from our top laners, though. I think it'll be largely about what they can get done in these team fights. Looking for second items for both of them. As aiming, we're going to check this out one more time. Throwing this arrow. Yeah, and I just think he didn't react soon enough so that he could satchel himself out of the way of the arrow. He does satchel himself a large distance out so he can not get a follow-up. Showmaker flashes though, and I think Cuz was coming in with a heal. Or maybe, yeah, he saw him use it just yeah. on himself after that. So just not in time to heal him. Maybe he could have flash healed him, but at that point it's like... Not sure if he would have decided it's worth it. Or, or obviously thought he was going to get in range anyway. But either way... It is a kill for Showmaker, but it's not really going to change the state of the game as of now. It's a minute 20 on that Dragon, and you can see D-Plus are setting a vision around Baron, trying to deny that. Very risky to go for a Baron against this Quantum Freaks comp, especially with D-Plus on red side. You're going to be in a barrel. Um, you're going to be fish yeah. in a barrel. And that's not good. That is not good. That's not what you want to be. There's still a lot of wards over there from Quantum Freaks, so they can really focus attention down towards this Dragon. And if they secure this third one, it'll be a massive boon for them. The stats from Hextech Dragons, Ability Haste and Attack Speed, great for like an Ezreal. Even like Nidalee and Ziggs are pretty happy with it, but getting one away from that soul puts so much pressure 
on deep boss. And they just recall. You can see Lucid recall and now yeah. they don't have control of this area. They have to face check into poke. And uh, they did want to get some items, right? Uh, there's a Vampiric Scepter now completed for aiming. Looking for a Bloodthirster is item number three by the looks. And they have Hawk Shot, so at least there's that, as Arrow is going to get the flash out from Andil. True Shot Barrage comes on through. That's going to sail by. Looked very cool. Um, isn't actually very useful. Is now Lucid going to get oh. hit by a whole bunch of abilities. Was that a satchel charge yeah. that uh, got him out of the Solar Flare? Got him out of the old bit of anti-synergy there. That kind of looked a little bit like Lucid became Ziggs for a second and satcheled himself. It was very weird. A Stromaker is going to get snagged by an arrow, uh, sorry, a spear, and that is going to probably just send D plus away from this dragon. Yep, your one engage tool is the Ash Arrow. It's already been bid. You are late to the objective. You get poked out. You can see the. Tr oh. Mm, I don't think they can do anything here. I think it's just gone. I and think this so is too. the problem. I think D plus's comp has into Quandom Freaks. You don't have great engage options. You are outranged heavily. If they ever get set up first in objective because you're late, you know, they went to buy after going topside. You just can't do anything, and now they are one dragon away from Soul. We've seen how suffocating it is if you're getting hit by these skill shots. You add the Hextech Soul, I mean, I don't even need to explain how over it feel after that. So, the plus are in a very precarious position in this game right now. Yeah, I think they need to play pretty heavily towards this Baron. You can see moving towards the top side, wanting to put pressure on the Dudu. He knows exactly what's going on, though. Control Ward is going to be taken out, but did its job. Problem I see, alive. The problem I see is, you know, the Ash Arrow picks, that is your angle. You know, you get someone to come over, you fire the arrow, you follow up. But other than that, your engage isn't fantastic. If you start the Baron, your turn isn't great. And, you know, as I said before, you, ca you can't be in the pit against this team. So if Quantum Freaks play it slow, play it careful, they should be in a great spot. D plus are trying to get a pick on a Bulldog again. He has Flash, though. He should not die to this. Well, he is wary. Leap has done a lot of damage. That's what we're checking out as far as stats are concerned, as aiming comes on over, and they do just rush this wave down. But it's a Ziggs. Yeah, I think uh, the wave should be kind of fine. Yeah, That, that is, is what Ziggs does, you know? Um, there were still bombs left. Yeah. Yeah, but he kind of he overpaid. But he's yeah. fine, you know? He left a big tip. Yeah, so we're not going to be sieging this anymore, I don't think, on the side of D+. But what else are they going to do? Is the arrow is just going to look like it's frustratingly sent towards Andal, and he just walks. Don't even know whether he consciously tried to avoid it, but he did. And now, Quandong Freaks, they're going to start up the Baron. And... You can scatter with the plants. Yeah, Lucid gets a plant in there. That's going to see what's going on, like you were talking about. There's no pressure on, on Quantum Freaks. You don't need to rush down the Baron. You, you're in complete control. Well, Grasping Roots, not going to quite find Andal there. But they'll just keep pushing and prodding, seeing if they can force D plus to make a mistake. Uh, but uh, they're not really in a rush to make anything happen right now. They do need to be careful. They get caught in this choke. This could be dangerous against a Renata. Yeah, we just haven't seen very much of uh, the Renata's power, right? Because they get to fan out. They get to just throw poke in. Yeah. And you're not really trying to death ball engage. Yeah. Which is what uh, the Renata is really useful for. So I want to commend once again Quandong Freaks for this draft choice. But also the way they're playing this out. Yeah, I mean, I think when it gets to this point, it's so hard for D+. Plus, but there were angles for them to find momentum early. I think Coz did such a fantastic job of shutting down the dives top. And the concerns about lanes, you know, they were alleviated. So this game could have been very different. D-plus could have just blown this out of the water and been already finishing the game now. But because of how things played out, Quantum Freeze played a smart one. Oh, yeah, well, Arrow, once again, not going to find anything as Dudu just gets out of there. Will secure their blue buff. Part of the problem um, with trying to make these engages work on the Ash Arrow Ooh, is so it, many mobile members of Quantum Freaks. You know, even Ziggs has a satchel and he's the easiest target. Andal has the Warmog's extra movement speed, and then obviously the other three all have dashes. Leaper even has cleanse, so they're throwing these out, and this is what D-Plus should be doing. They should be frequently throwing these ults out to try and burn summoners, to try and catch people. It's just not working. No, not quite. And Bulldog very safely just farming into King in here, as we can see. Just uh, going as long range as possible, just doesn't even hit. Uh, he was throwing that Bouncing Bomb from such high range. There's now Kellen just doing what he can to try and get some vision down. Let's have that Warmog's completed. It's one of the tankiest Renatas I've seen. 
um, but doesn't have very many resistances, so still will go down very, very quickly if he is ever caught out of position. That's why you can see a lot of people with him when he is on his uh, little vision adventures. And yeah, Bulldog just picked up Leandri, so a lot of health stack is on the side of D+. Cool, grasping root, going to connect onto Leaper. Yeah, he wants to get the recall. Not a TP Ezreal, so might slow him at all, oh, man. Ow. Might slow him on to get on the map, but it is an Ezreal with um, Hex Gates. So it shouldn't slow him down too much. You can see D plus learned the lesson from last time. They are setting up around the dragon as soon as possible. Yep. This is picking up the honey fruit. They know this has to be done. If they're there late again, they just lose soul. And Arrow going to be flying out once again as Bulldog. Not going to be hand shook either. I, like, I feel like aiming is making decent attempts. Like, none of the, none of the ults are that wide. It's just. It's not easy to consistently hit them in a distance. Ow. That well, hits. I remember there's a Ziggzolt. So, Lucid, you're almost in kill range. He's basically dead man walking. There's a flash out from Andil. Wanting to avoid the handshakes that are coming in from Kel and Spear. Going to miss. There are a couple of Bloodthirsters picked up by the 80 carries of D+. Will be able to help keep Showmaker and aiming healthy. If they knew that Lucid was there, if they stopped him from coming back. They don't know he's recalled yet. Dudu is on this flank angle. Yeah. And Kellen, ooh, I mean, precarious. The positioning here from sort of everyone right now as the Dragon's getting a little bit mad. King and dealing with the minion wave in mid lane. Lucid gets back, hex gates, and one heck of a thing. That's going to help him out. These spears all need to be avoided. As soon as one of them lands, I think that that's just Sol. Yeah. Going over to Quandong Freaks. And there is one of Ooh. them. Kellen is just dead. He flashes forward. King and finding the back line there as well. And it's a decent ulti from Lucid. But in goes Dudu. He'll find the crush. He'll find the wallop. And out goes Lucid from the fight. Showmaker can't do anything. And I think we're going to game number three as Quandong Freaks will secure the Hextech soul. Felt like the pressure was just building up. Skill shots being thrown out. The combo connects on a Kellen. And then the explosion of the fight. Quantum Freaks managed to clutch it out, though. Managed to win it. Managed to get Sol. And now looking at Baron. This game is firmly in their hands. And I want to go back to the draft. When we saw the Renekton locked in and the Nidalee hovered. And they didn't lock it. It could have been the Nidalee on the other side. But instead, Cuz says, no, 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 no. You're not going to get Renekton Nidalee. I will take this one away. And Cuz has looked absolutely fantastic. There goes the Baron. Very comfortably secured here by the Quantum Freaks. And D plus just, there's just nothing they can really do to close the gap without the arrow. Yeah, I mean, this satchel into the Mystic shot. Leaper gets caught by the ult, but cleanses it and then disengages. Bulldog flashes out. King actually does a lot of work, but the follow up's not there. And Juju comes in huge on this Nar. Showmaker trying to make things happen, but the Ezreal damage is just absurd. Yeah, and I don't know how much one of those rockets missed Leaper. I think it went through it. I guess he leaped over it. Yeah, I guess uh, Ezreal is even more overpowered than I originally thought. And now in the situation where with the Hextech Soul, if some of this poke lands, the impact is so big because anytime D plus are remotely close to each other, you just AOE slow on the whole team. Yep. One bit of poke lands, okay, well now they're slowed. Next bit of poke lands, you know, you land an Nidalee Spear, that's going to lead into a, a Ziggs Q, an Ezreal Mystic Shot. It's just become so much harder now. Quantum Freaks are down sums, but so are D+. Plus. And again, the lack of engage tools is a struggle, but if they find a big arrow from aiming, now is the time. Well, Leaper is just going to try and throw all of his burst onto Showmaker. True Shot Barrage goes wide, though. So Showmaker will be alive for now. Mega Inferno Bomb comes down. There is Bow. poke for days. And Quantum Freaks, yeah, Kuz even going to land that spear onto aiming. It's brutal. Yeah, it is. It's Siege. it's not looking very fun. There's also a Megana that's just traipsing his way down this top lane. And he is not really being answered. There is King in there, but Quantum Freaks, they'll just be able to satchel all of these turrets. D plus spread way too thin as now Kellen going for a weird flanky angle. But uh, nothing much to be found as two and hips have been removed. We're looking for a teleport angle. Let's see whether King can actually get himself in. He flashes for it. And uh, he's just by himself. He's going to be ripped to shreds. Mega and oh! bombs up once again. And the bailout is on aiming, but he's just dead. Not getting out of this one. Bulldog, a massive game on this Ziggs. And Showmaker is just going to be torn from the rift. Quandong Freaks, welcome back to the LCK. We missed you. Really solid performance there. I think 
multiple things went right for them. I think the draft worked effectively. The Ezreal, you know, obviously left open, a bit disrespectful from D+, but the poke heavy composition, and our concern was those early lanes, but they navigated it well, and Cuz in particular yeah. showed up top when he needed to, and then when it got came to those dragon setups, they knew what they had to do. They got there early, D+, was late, and it ended up backfiring massively, and now Quandon Freaks, you know, they've been in a bit of a slump, but playing like this, Realistic to see them taking down D plus and that'd be a massive scalp to take. 100%. You can see Quantum there sitting in the back as well, just in case Andal runs into any extra problems. But I don't think after this one that Andal's going anywhere. Quantum Freak's looking pretty good. And I like that they made adjustments. This is something that we've said is that Quantum Freaks haven't been a team that have adjusted during a series very well. But this, I feel like they made the right choices. I think. This was more on D+, plus, on their decisions made, especially in the draft phase, yep. not quite getting them into a position to, to have a way forward if those early dives top don't work. But they didn't, and it was mitigated beautifully by Quantum Freak. So I don't want to take anything away and say, oh, draft difference and things like this, because I think Quantum Freaks, they had a plan, and it worked so much better in the late game. Yeah, you know, obviously D+, plus to just win with Ezreal in game one, but the expectation is a stronger team with Ezreal will win, Quantum Freak still had some hurdles to navigate and they did very well. I will say though, for D+, you need to be able to lock down an Ezreal if you're not allowed to open, but I think just ban it, it's a simple option. Yeah, banning it sounds like a good move. They can move back to the blue side now, but we're gonna move to a break. When we get back, the space is gonna break it down and we'll be there for the last game of the series. Okay, okay. 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 You just don't have to worry about uh, the the vice situation because if it's first picked, I think you can draft around it. Um, so I think you might be right. The LeBlanc is going to stick around. That's the thing as well as you can deny the Vi. If they first pick something else, you can deny it. But LeBlanc is like a showmaker pick. You know, you, you you're not going to pick that up for Bulldog. At least I don't think. The There's the Ezreal. Ezreal, and the third band will be Rumble. Um, hopefully. I, I yeah. say nervously. Letting that one through would be uh, another another error. That would be out of the frying pan and into the fire, quite literally. Um, well, Ash is going to be banned this time around. So the Cassante was banned in the first round in game one, alongside the Tristana and the Renekton. So this time the uh, change up is going to be the Ash. So Cassante opened for the first time because D Plus have been banning it. They respected Dusante. Understandable. This is uh, too much deliberation for my liking. They banned the vibe, but now it's just it's Rumble face pick. You can see King and speaking. I'm, I'm going to write in Rumble on my little sheet. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know they're taking time just to just to double check. They did leave Rumble open. Really? Wow. They they left it open. Yep. Well, let's lock it in. Yep. They were like, "There's a bug. It's not gray." Uh, and as it turns out, uh, it's just pickable. Uh, we're gonna go another Yordle. Ninja Yordle, Yordle versus Mech Rider Yordle, or an Aatrox. That that sounds optimistic. Mm. You know, I honestly, all these picks are kind of meta. 
which is giving me more concern, because if, if Dudu brought something crazy that we'd never seen before out, maybe. Like there, Cassante? There was, yeah, not so much. Maybe there was like some, some wacky pick we've never thought of that he's going to bring out into it, but when, when it's just Cassante, it's like, no, they don't have that. Yeah. Also, but, the thing with leaving Rumble open is you're like, okay, what do we get for it? Well, Cassante wasn't going to get picked away. Zeri, you're just going to play into aiming Kaiser. I mean, it's going to be aiming Kaiser. It's almost so a guarantee. You have a losing match up top against the strongest top lane on the patch. You're now giving aiming his best champion. I think his, his honestly, I think his Kaiser is better than his Ezreal. It's just Ezreal's stronger right now. You're yeah. giving aiming his best champion in a good matchup. And I think Showmaker just takes like an 80 mid. Potentially yeah. to shore up because you're gonna have a lot of AP with the composition. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe they're going a different direction because with the Rumble, it is you know the Kais is quite AP heavy. The Rumble quite, quite AP heavy. They're gonna lock in the Sejuani though for Lucid. I think Sedge Kaisa is probably the way to go. Um, I may not have even uh, necessarily opted into the Sejuani, but it does have a lot of value alongside the Rumble. Yeah, I think my one concern is with the Sejuani jungle and the the Rumble top and the Kaisa AD carry who has a lot of AP damage. Yeah. You are a bit AP heavy. You could go an alternative build that is possible. But the only concern is here is AD mid is going to get banned away from Showmaker. And he hasn't even been leaning towards them that heavily. You know, obviously, we saw him last game play Corky. I mean, it's going to be Yasuo. That would be fun. The um, it's a guarantee. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a major concern, like the, the AP profiling, because like I said, Kaiser kind of just build. But the main thing is you've oh. got fantastic picks for your... AD carry and... Shivana! Fight fire with fire? Yeah, there I we guess. go. I mean, this is one of the angles where we've uh, we've heard players saying, like, Shivana can be picked into tank junglers like the Sejuani. So an opportunity here. Yeah, and I think what's what's important is, you know, going back to the Honda Life e Esports series, in game one, it was into Sen and Nidalee, a ton of sustain. In game three, the Ivan had the Moonstone Redemption, a lot of sustain. That certainly caused issues for the Shivana, so none of that really present here. We Not are yet. seeing Rakan banned away from Kellen. Um, obviously, with the Kaiser being picked, it's going to be engaged supports. And I think Quantum Freaks might want to lean towards Leona, so we'll see if if D plus end up banning that away. Maybe could be concerned about like a Braum last pick, so maybe that, but they opt to go for the Alistair ban. Alistair often having good matchups in a lot of these melee engages. Yeah, I am. Um... I don't know whether the Braum has massive value, but I don't think it sounds like a bad yeah, idea necessarily. I, I like it in a Kaisa. I don't like it in a Rumble just because you get toasted. You yeah. Know, the ult doesn't do much. They are going to respect ban the Yone. Wrong brother, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I mean, then getting some AD for Showmaker would really round things out, but it just depends what. Yeah, they have played some Sejuani Asuo uh, back in the day. That was, of course, uh, when Canyon was the jungler for Showmaker, but... Uh, yeah, I, I was being a little facetious. That is going to be a Callista ban, just to take away the Zeri mid lane uh, option, which is uh, something that they, I believe, were considering, given the fact that Bulldog already played it in game one. Yeah, had the flexibility there. Looks like they're going to lean towards the Corky. Showmaker could take something like Lucian in this situation uh, into it. Yep. Has been one of his favorites in the past. Yeah, or could go that win, brother. Yeah. Um, would be a pretty crazy one. The wind wall, pretty high value against 280 carries and a Shivana. But we'll see what they opt for. I would love to see it. Uh, they're going to look at the Leona Slow first. With the Leona. And Solar Flare Equalizer is one heck of a combo. So I, I'd be a fan of that. I mean, Magnus Storm, also pretty good. You know, any engaged support. Oh, but equalizer. do you know what Rel has? What? A knock up. Oh, technically, right? The true. Magnus Storm works. That's the adjustment. And so that is adjusting for the Yasuo. You're really selling me on this. Right, Showmaker? Right, Showmaker? That's what we're doing. We got to. I mean, what else are we going to do in this? In this? Uh, OK, it's, it's Trindamir. Yeah, no, obviously, it was, it was always Trindamir. How didn't you know this? I'm an idiot. That's why. Oh, I, I, I just oh, should have known that it was going to be Trindamir. Oh, I'm a silly Billy. Poppy support coming out into the Rel. Decent matchup there. They needed some AD with the composition. It sinks well with the Sejuani. But importantly, playing an AD carry champ mid, if you fall behind as the Corky and the Trindamir, he will dive you. 
Yeah. He will just tower dive you relentlessly. And this is a very aggressive composition from D+. Quantum Freaks want to try and sort of slow things down, let the Shivana farm up, play to peel, play to disengage, have them run through the flames. I think this is going to be a hectic one, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, and uh, look, there's not as much poke going on. I don't think it's going to be as much suffocation in this game. It's going to be brawling. It's going to be battle, and uh, it's 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 going to be Trindamir mid lane. Um, that uh, that's just that's just the thing. I feel like Trindamir has been pro uh, like popping up a little bit more recently, um, but I wasn't expecting Showmaker to pull that one out uh, in this game. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think in terms of a list of 80 champions I expected mid, um, there was like there was a lot I expected before the Trinity. Yeah, there was a lot above that. But I, I, I see the logic, you know, I see what the thought process is. You have two strong, well, you have a strong top laner. You have a solo laner mid who can kind of shake off the Corky Harass, and if he gets rolling, we'll take over the game. Aiming on his best pick. And ultimately, we have to see if Kuz can be the first to really make the Shivana work. We're also, okay. we're doing a little bit of stats farming as well. You know, first Trindamir mid lane. Let's jump out of the rift. Man, D plus fans and Quantum fans, extraordinarily loud here in Low Park today. And understandably so. Both of them picking up a victory here in the series. Last time around, it was Quantum Freaks winning game one and then losing the series. This time around, could be their opportunity. They can find a win here is, uh, all right. Got a bit of uh, bit of an invade. As now Bulldog, gonna get oh, slowed absolutely. down. Oh dear, double Harpoon's gonna connect. And Making Valkyrie's away. Start the Valk is pretty big. Honestly, I would have loved to have seen Kellen flash for some, to be in his flash. I think it's worth it just to put the pressure on Bulldog as much as possible. Andal, you know, as a poppy, you don't have that much pressure in this lane. You're more playing to mitigate. So I think anything you can do to put Bulldog behind in this matchup is just going to make Showmaker have the potential to take over the game. Bulldog has gone first strike for the money printer Corky into melee matchups. Makes a lot of sense. But D-Plus have gone for this committal invade here to steal away the blue. Kind of just disrupt because his farming as much as possible. So do you want to know something fun? Sure. Now that uh, Showmaker has played Trindamir, He's now played Trindamir the same amount of times that he's played Huey. Wow, how many times is that? One. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for the, the stats. And 12 times less than the amount of times he's played Renekton. <laughs> so there you go. That one feels personal. <laughs> um, I, d I did like uh, Showmaker on melee mid laners. And we'll see how he's going to do here. I'm going to look at Lucid 4 and 6. Four wins, six losses on Sejuani, and considering D plus have been... Oh, there's a cleanse out from aiming. Kellen also looking a little worse for wear here, so Andor making use of the buckler so far. Yeah, I was going to say, since uh, D plus generally on the higher ends of our standings, the fact they've been losing a lot on Sejuani, a bit worrying. But Andor getting a, a good result there. You know, Poppy, if you commit the flash for the wall bang, sure, but often hard to find a stun against the wall without that. Oh, oh, Andal's going to be flashing away as Lucid looking for an angle here. The heroic charge does come down. Leaper's going to skate the wall. And Zeri. But also just Andal's immediate reaction there. You know, they knew things were risky because they knew that uh, Lucid was on that side of the map. So they do end up backing away. But now Showmaker's hunting Kuz. But we'll find the wolves getting taken down. Kuz can easily disengage in the situation with speed for the W. Yep. Uh... And now Kellen looking. Yeah, we'll find a crash down here as Leaper takes so much damage. Skates the wall, but uh, down to 200 health. And yeah. That is aiming and Kellen just taking some control here of this lane. You can see already, I mean, there is a big wave stacked up, but Leaper oh. needs to be able to pick this up. They need level three as well. Andal doesn't have his W yet, and it makes such a big difference to defend against his dive. Yep, Lucid just going to walk in. That is going to be a plate taken as well. Heroic Charge does come down as Kellen trying to crash out of there, but he's just dead. The teleport comes in from Dudu to save the play. He will lose out a bit as far as the top lane is concerned, but that is such good mitigation here from Kwandong Freaks. Andal's just been on fire on this Poppy support pick, getting so much value here, shutting down Kellen, getting the kill, allowing Leaper to pick up the wave. And now with his W unlocked, he's going to be able to Definitely mitigate the pressure from Kellen on this one. 
Juju does lose a bit of farm in the top side, but he is a Kasante. I'm sure he will get over it. Yep, he'll be just fine. So the bottom side, which is something that DK have been playing through for quite some time, isn't necessarily going to work out. Trimic also going teleportless this game. It's something that uh, we know that Trinomirs really do like to do. But let's check out this play once again. Yeah, and you can see Leaper kind of backs away a little bit, and then they try to force on him. And immediately, Andal just slams Kellen into the wall. Leaper having flash as well. And the fact that An uh, that Kellen didn't made it a little bit difficult to find that play. And Andal's back in lane and taking names already. Yeah. Just uh, pushing Kellen out of here. Oh, but Leaper didn't get a reset. So it's two long swords edge to aiming. But I think with Kellen being so low, it's not too big of a concern. I'm not really in a position to contest the wave, so. Yeah, Andal is also very large. So that should help out. Well, actually, Andal's not that big. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, he's a Yordle. Well, yeah, he's a Yordle, so... Yeah, but he is strong. He has aura. Very strong. In fact, I mean, Poppy's hammer is about the same size as Poppy. So that seems pretty strong. Well, me. in terms of area... Oh, uh, Dudu is struggling into the old rumble problem. Yeah. And the LCK total. And this is, this is kind of crazy, right? Because... There have been times where Cassante is particularly ridiculous and Rumble wasn't as ridiculous. And now Cassante is not nearly as powerful as he used to be and Rumble is very powerful. Oh, and uh, Cuz is coming top pre-6. All right. Oh, dude doesn't have ult yet, though, and Kinga does. This is not a good play. Yeah, I um, feel like someone would die if they tried to kill the Rumble at this stage. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, someone will die does not mean that both of them won't. Um, uh, yeah. At least one. <laughs> uh, one minimum. <laughs> All right, so they are going to back away from that one. Ward is down here, so Lucid. Dudu needs ult. Be spotted. Needs ult. Uh, I feel that they're really going to be able to mitigate this. Because there's a bit far away, though. I think I assume Dudu's pretty close. He did miss some XP when he TP'd bot. Yeah, we'll I don't think they're this... going to go for the double dive. Yeah, this might be just King in opting in for a crash and just backing away, and that is precisely what's going to happen. Possibly could just come over and barbecue some grubs, as Lucid would be able to grab at least the first one. And we've got another heroic charge on the Kellen. He's just dead. Just eliminated. Andal is a monster. Absolutely. And I feel like this is part of the play pattern of the Poppy setting traps. That wall stun lasts so long and does so much damage. It's such, uh, such a threatening ability. And Bulldog's starting to feel the pain a little bit in the mid lane into the Trindomir. So obviously yeah. you can stay in through all your damage at this point. And if you ever get low, you're, in, you're always in dive threat. Well, now it's going to be a dragon picked up for the dragon lady. That feels fantastic. Showmaker does have the ulti. He's now looking for it as the Void Seeker is not going to find the angle. I will say as well, the poppy pick, this final poppy pick. Obviously, Great Neural, we've seen it do fantastic lane so far. But an ulting Trindomir, I cannot think of a better ability to deal with him than the Poppy ult. Oh, yeah. As now Leaper getting completely minion blocked. Um, having a horrible time. That looked that looked very sad. Yeah, you hit level 6, you really want to make the play happen, even if you can just burn some summoners or get aiming low. But unfortunately, not able to do so. Now Leaper was going to go for a reset, but Kellen and aiming as a duo will block it. Yeah. Um, Leaper really not able to reset uh, very often. As, all right, Shattering Strike. There's the crash down onto Andal. Will they be able to punish this Poppy? That's the question. Stepfast presence. He's trying to get out, but there's a flash from Lucid. And he just says no. That is going to be an answering kill. Deep plus on the board. Good moves there from Kellen. In matchups, whenever you're playing into something that can block your W, you really have to go for the Q first to stun and then follow up with the W. And he does that there on Andal. Able to catch him off guard. Now, Leaper. Is feeling comfortable to hang around with Cuz backing him up. Yep, Showmaker just pressing E a few times, so spinning angry. around in a line and stuff, yelling, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so we're going to check out this kill on Kellen one more time. Andal just says, you're dead. Finds the angle really well into the wall, and Kellen just doesn't get to play the game. Uh, and then in return, Kellen's like, well, neither do you. Yeah. Good to get some revenge here. But Lucid, I think, playing it very, very well. And has to flash, but is going to be able to do so successfully. Yeah, could have maybe looked for the ult there, I guess, instead of, instead of flashing, but just wanted to secure it with the initial stun uh, from the passive and then had the ult for follow-up. wasn't even needed. Yep. And now he's got the Zeeks completed because still heading towards that uh, Spear of Sojourn. 
Which yeah. Is, uh, going to be the first completion. That's one thing here is that the Shivana is not very farmed compared to what we've seen in other games. And you have a lot of expensive items. So Kerr's not really hitting that trajectory we sometimes see from the Shivana jungles. Like we had that peanut game where even though obviously backfired later, he yeah, farm up a storm. He did. So Kuz does, uh, he, he did manage to get a dragon though. That is certainly good news. Uh, and they do have a slight this. gold advantage. Yeah, I mean, the build stacks so much early HP that the the impact of resists is quite nice. But still doesn't turn you into a tank. You're not going to become Sejuani. Nope. Um, I definitely think some of our junglers need to be reminded of that. Thankfully, they do have a tank uh, in this game, which is better than some of our Shivanas have uh, have had. Yeah, if you're the tankiest person in the game as the AP Shiv, you're like, mm. Yeah, things might be going wrong. The uh, yeah, the Nah wasn't a great option as Andal is just uh, just doing whatever he wants, I guess. Uh, Bulldog now trying to deal with Showmaker here. Does of course still have the ultimate. Well, he's never going to die, but Lucid's also probably going to struggle oh. to hold on to this one as the Glacial Prison goes wide. Equalizer is something that Andal has to deal with though. Heroic Charge, he knows that he's dead. And now Kellen looking for an angle onto Kuz here. Dragon's Descent is up. And so uh, Kuz can just uh, drag it away whenever he would like. Yeah, you can see they were waiting for Andal. They're like, we'll, we'll wait for you, brother. And Andal's like, go without me. Yeah. Live. He, he let go of the ledge and said, save yourselves. Yeah. And uh, Leaper, uh, yeah, just um, dealing with the, the walking barbecue. Yeah, I mean, Kingen doesn't have a complete item yet. So I think a little spray of the flamethrower, doing a third of Leaper's health. Yeah. That's what we expect. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We're just watching Balance Incarnate. Yeah. There are a few things that need to be banned uh, in League of Legends at the moment. And that being said, struggled to ban one of them. Considering how the game's gone so far. I mean, not end of the world. Not Absolutely. end of the world yet. You know, and I think the big thing is Dragon in a minute is that Mountain. Quantum Freaks obviously would love to get that, but also really want to hopefully high roll a good soul for themselves. And considering it's Infernal Mountain first two Dragons, odds aren't looking fantastic. Yep. Cuz going into Astalos form here. And we'll be able to uh, take down these grubs. Not anything that Lucid's going to be able to do about it, but that is just a trade three for three. And so Cuz pretty happy about that. Still, the fact that, like you say, uh, Lucid has been able to just keep up, keep up with farm, just be on complete farm parity with uh, with Cuz is kind of huge, especially given the fact that there was a lot of sort of mi mixing around. As speaking of which, okay, Leaper is going to get stunned up. Lucid uh, is going to get the cleanse out. That is good. Yeah, pretty big actually, considering Dragon Fight in 15. Yeah. Cuz has just been dissolved, Clan has just been bin. I don't think Quantum Freak's gonna be able to contest this one. Lucid and Kellen fishing, wanting to find an angle. Leaper has really struggled to get towards minion wave so far this game. As aiming, wanting to pad those gold stats. There is another plate to go down. I do want to say a three game series, pretty good for aiming, getting more gold. Yeah. You have an extra whole game yeah. to get gold. So that's good news for D+, at least. As now Andal, uh, he gets a ward down, and Stepfast Presence comes on through. That is a lot of value. Still, that control ward is just going to be taken out, and D+, have full control over this dragon. Yeah, it's not like last game, Orcs. Absolutely isn't. Uh, it's going to be an Ocean Soul, which, you know, I don't think it's... It's got an okay value here. There's some bulkier members. There's think a lot about all the mana regen that the Rumble and Trindomir can get. And the Shivana. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I think the healing can be decent against some of the poke, you know, um, but not the soul you're really hoping for if you're trying to go for a Dragon Wing Con. It's not really one of those. As uh, Cuz is going to get prisoned. Okay, there's the Keeper's Verdict. As uh, Showmaker comes on through here and isn't really going to be able to do too much. In the meantime, Leap is dead. Yeah. Um, I kind of missed that with the zoom out. I was still focused on the blue buff because I wasn't expecting Leaper to just die. The blue buff looked like it was more likely to survive than Leaper. Um, <laughs> then I checked out Aiming's summoner spells and ultimate, and they're all still there. Yeah. Kellen used his ultimate, though, and Ignite. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, I think Andal a little bit too focused on defending the blue there, and then ends up leaving his A carry out to dry a bit. Kellen's like, oh. He's just bot alone, okay. No, he just flash. he flashes in. And yeah, so aiming definitely didn't need to press any buttons because it was all about Kellen. Yeah, the payoff of being in that cleanse before, pretty big. Yeah. Uh, and so far, you know, we saw this really cool, interesting pick in the Trinomere, and we haven't seen it at all. It has not been about that pick whatsoever. And do you know what the best part is? If Showmaker plays it right, we will never see it. 
<laughs> we will we will see it maybe kill a turret or two um, as the game extends. Um, that's 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 it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least now because it's been able to pick up a bigger bit of a farm advantage. Has the Spirit of Shojin completed? Um, but still a while before he's really taken over games. Oh, Shamaker. Like yeah, there is a, a turret still here. Trindamir does really like a long lane to chase people down through. Yeah. Especially with the Ghost. If you get to the point where, you know, those towers are taken, uh, Bulldog is in a very dangerous position. Oh, yeah. Well, Andal doing a little bit of rotating over. Ward's being removed here by Kellen. And Lucid getting to work on this Rift Herald. Let's see whether they can find a Glacial Prison. Andal going to take that one. Steadfast Presence was down. There's the Dragon Descent as Kaz just getting ripped to shreds. He is not tanky at all, but they still managed to get enough damage down as Leaper going to get altered on by aiming. He supercharges, and now he's going to pick up a triple. Oh, it's aiming Kaiser all over again. And we got a new, you know, this was a good game for Eamon to be playing the Kaiser, but picking up three kills there on the back of that, he is going to be monstrously strong. Cuz flies in, and it just feels like he's not able to make the impact. Oh, doo doo. I wonder if this is a more fun game for Kingen. Because remember game one when uh, Aiming was just carrying? Oh, yeah. Kingen was like, this isn't fun. Well, this is looking like more fun for Kingen. Yeah, I, I would say that. He's not the one getting bullied out yeah. as he was on the Lee Sin. Also looking like it's a bit cruel uh, for Dudu, who's uh, really struggling into the Rumble, as is to be expected, but still, uh, it's a tough time. Let's check this one yeah, out from Aiming's perspective. Oh, no, 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 no. just gets like one shot. <laughs> and then here, Andal goes for a nice play on Aiming, but some of the difference, able to reposition, follow up for the kill, and then it's just easy cleaning up. This is me, this is Aiming, says Aiming. Thank you, G-Sun, for the translation. He just says that I'm the big brother, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he is one of the older players on the team. Uh, so it does make some sense. Uh, Showmaker is just, um, just this is this is the, this is a tournament. Uh, he, he he will be in a side lane, and he will be doing the best that he can to uh, just kill turrets. Yeah, he will. Uh, and they're looking at, like they're trying to set up on him, but oh, look know, at him! Did just say it's a tournament. Did you see the walking? Yeah. Oh, so much walking. Oh, look at the did. Yeah, he pressed Q. Yeah. Um, yep. There you go. Some slick moves. Uh, and so aiming has yeah. gone. So he has the crack and he has the Ginsu, so he is doing a lot of damage right now. Oh yeah. Um, large amounts of damage. Oh, and it's Stride Breaker on Showmaker as well. I was wondering what he was going to be building that team at into. So yeah. Got to have a little bit more ability to team fight as Bulldog doesn't get chickened. Um, Showmaker takes a lot of damage. Lucid as well, now having to deal with three people, but he's so tanky. There's the crash down. Cuz is just torn apart once again. Oh man, I was expecting the Shivana to be really good. What's going on here? As Bulldog almost dies to a harpoon to the noggin. And uh, yeah, Kingen is just kind of playing with his food right now. Showmaker comes on over and Bulldog is very dead. It was almost the Winter's Wrath that takes down the Corky. But of course, it's aiming instead. He's 7 0 1, guys. He's pretty fed, you know? Uh, and I feel like he's trying to get this one on lock. They take down that tier 2 tower bot. I'm this starting. Game is looking rough. It is. I'm starting to agree with Wolf that perhaps D plus just didn't have the right draft. <laughs> By the way, I find it so funny because like runs around Lucid to ult him back, then just gets stun locked and just immediately dies. Yeah, Kellen actually finding a phenomenal angle in this fight as well. Have to Look. credit uh, this guy's rel play so far today. Look, I, I know that that Shivana has worked well in the LPL. I know it's worked well in the solo queue. I know that it's not just a champion. But man, have our junglers stunk on this pick. And, like, I honestly even think, here's, this is going to sound crazy. You ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready. Pina Chavana was better than this. Cuz barely even has a farm lead. At least Pina had that in the second game. At least he was farmed. Like, yes, he was useless afterwards, but at least he farmed well. Cuz is like 20 CS up on a Sejuani. Um, didn't Sponge win a game on... He had a good early game, but then he kept dying, but his team still won because... I, I feel like the sponge one was like, he kept dying at the start of fights, even though he won. But that's the point, is that you, you die in the right position. Oh, Put yeah, the yeah, fire yeah. on the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. Because we saw that Cuz almost killed two people by accident. 
by breathing in a circle. Yeah. And aiming killed everyone because he wasn't in the circle. I think the problem is, Kuz is leading the charge, and I think they would really appreciate if someone who is actually tanky or a support would yeah. lead the charge. Because if, if Andal dies immediately, it's whatever, his job is done. But Kuz actually wants to do stuff in the fight, and he's not getting to. Yeah, he sort of feels like he's playing old top lane Shivana, where you are actually a bruiser. You're not a bruiser. Um, you, that's just not how it is. And you want to split fights. You want to be able to sort of play some smoke and mirrors and then chase people down. He also would like to have two items, at least, you know? Yeah, um, or, or more than one. Uh, he just yeah. did his, his, his bite on Showmaker. I don't think his health moved. Well, Showmaker's health doesn't even need to move. It's now Leaper is all... He's just dead. He's, He's just dead. Not able to skate out of that one. There's also a kill going over to Showmaker, who um, makes Andal a little bit frightened. You can see the frightened chicken up there. Love that. I'm really glad that that uh, animation has stayed in the game all this time. Yeah. Because uh, if, if Trinomir lost his chicken, you know, because he is, like, a super hardcore cool character and stuff like that, but then, like, puts a little frightened chicken. It's Love that. It's so off theme, it's beautiful. I think that's why the Shivana is struggling, because Kuz not dealing well with the chicken emote. Yeah. No, it's um, understandable as well. It is very intimidating. And D+, plus, they are going to take a Baron. Um, that's going to die at 20 minutes into the game. Baron was only 14 seconds old. Well, that's um, uh, it's not it's not a lot of Baron uh, time that we had on the Rift. Yeah, they just have no way of dealing with Showmaker. But I, I'm not even—I don't even think Cuz ulted here. Like, I'm not. I guess he got sniped by the Lucid ult. Yeah. 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 That was gorgeous ultimate from Lucid. Yeah. Well, uh, and then we see aiming with the. Yeah. Wait. Going for Zeri. That was a lot of damage. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. A very, very big Kaiser. Yeah, very fed. And that is the Gold King. And uh, Lucid, not. Uh, he's just going to throw out a thumbs up. It's a Bulldog. Bulldog not really able to do too much of anything at all. What else needs to be said, yeah. honestly? Um, Maybe nothing. Maybe we should just. Uh, do you want to just get up? <laughs> <laughs> just go. You know, I'm going to be honest. When the Shivana got linked, locked in, I kind of felt. <laughs> 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 Uh, the worst part is, is it's not only the Shivana getting locked in, but it's also the Rumble getting locked in, right? Like, yeah, that too. Like, come on. Yeah. I, also, uh, I, you know, I gave it the benefit of the doubt as well. I go into each game, I'm like, let's see what this jungler can do. Oh, the Equalizer down as well. And now Bulldog, he's not going to be able to get out of this one. There's Killer Instinct. We all knew it was coming. And Kuz just going to be avoided by Amy. He still had the flash, still a thousand gold. Goes to Andal! Oh god, that's not where they wanted the money, but he has been the best performing player on the team. As Showmaker is just spinning Slash over the wall into the enemy base. And he still has the ultimate. I don't think he's had to press it all game long. And yeah, uh, yeah they're, just, they're, just gonna, just, they're just gonna kill the turret. Just a, a Trinomir game where you win and you don't press your ult once would, would surely be the biggest flex. In yeah. terms of how doomed the game was, you know? Playing with our ultimate. You know what reminded me of? There was that MSI. Um, I think it was in 2022 when it was like uh, Rise against Anivia and Caps picked the, uh, the Anivia and he, he didn't use the egg once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he like, just, do it, does he even have a passive? Does he even have a passive? It's does like when you go, even have an ult. Yeah, it's when you go undying on Cogmore, you know? Yeah. Where is your passive? Oh my it's God, like when you go undying on, on Zyra. You don't have a passive. Oh, wait, not anymore. It, you know, I see Rumble melting people in the replay and in the picture in picture. It's just a consistent theme. They do kill aiming, but the gold goes to. You know, maybe maybe Andal's the right pierce to get the gold. Honestly, probably. I think he deserves uh, it. I think he's a hint at more than some of his teammates <laughs> right now. He's got that Warmog's finished. He's going to be slightly tankier than... He's, he's going to have some more more. health bar to get through. Yeah. Um, yeah. 8,500 gold lead. That is a large amount of gold lead, Orcs. Yes. Um, they also have a rumble lead, because they have one rumble and Quantum Freaks have zero. Oh, man. Why didn't they just also get some rumble? <laughs> that was... Uh, I think they slipped up on that one. Yeah. Um, missed out a little bit. Uh, and now we see D plus. Oh, Showmaker. Oh, yeah, that's he is the He's taking some damage. You know, Kuz is doing pretty good in that department as well. I like how the, the highlight there as well. It's like, look at that. Yeah, good work. Good job. <laughs> something, something useful. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing he's, his thing, though. He's in the side lane. That's he's what like, you have to do. He's like, Aiming, you do your thing. I will do mine. You I, guys go have fun as a team. I'm. This is his moody phase where he's oh. by himself. Andil. 
All right, he's gonna look for that flank angle. They want to get Kellen. Magnus Storm onto seven people or something, but he's still dead. There's no one else there. And Glacial Prison going to come in. Equalizes down as well. Bulldog and Leaper, both of the 80 carries That's are dead. just roasted. Oh God, okay, Dudu wants all out of this game, to be honest. And he chose the wrong target because he can't win the 1v1. Not with this, Kaiser. Aiming's too big, and that's going to be the ace. That will be the end of the game. And uh, King improving once again that, uh, yeah, you can't leave the Ezreal up, but you also can't leave the Rumble up. I love how Rumble was just like not the, was by far not like the main focus of this game. He kind of just did his thing top lane. He joins a team fight, one shot everyone. <laughs> yeah, just actually everyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that champion's still broken. Yeah. Um, well, it's me. All right, there goes the game, and D-plus able to bounce back after a game two loss, but they did not make that one look very close at all yeah. after the mid-game. Uh, game two, you know, it was talked about quite a bit. There are some draft issues, there are some, some concerns. Quantum Freeze played it well, but game three, they gave over Rumble, they gave Aiming a great Kaiser situation, and most importantly, they picked the Siobhan again. And it's not all about picks, it isn't. I thought you were gonna say, most importantly, Showmaker by Trindy. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, the, the Trindemir you know stats in the Corky are looking good. You know what? The Trindemir was like uh, the Lee Sin. I'm going to yeah. be honest. <laughs> yeah. It was there. It was present. We were excited when I got locked in. And then we're like, wait, what happened? It sort of makes you realize why people pick meta champions. Because sometimes when you choose the ones that aren't as popular, yep. you learn why they are perhaps not as popular. But honestly, like, it did what it was supposed to do. It nullified the mid lane, oh, no, and I think then just farmed side I lanes. It was fine. I think the pick was fine. It made sense, you yeah. know? Uh, and they didn't sync it up too much with the Sejuani, but it had power there. But, I mean, ultimately... <laughs> Kuro's like, what are you doing, man? I think the thing is with a team like Wonder <laughs> Freaks is they are struggling. Playing yeah. into a team like D+, who are, you know, a formidable opponent, like, draft isn't everything, but if you give yourself a disadvantage in draft, it's so hard to overcome it. Absolutely. You see the game two, even though they had a pretty significant edge, it, you know, it took a while to get rolling. And I think if you're giving yourself that disadvantage when you're already playing against a strong team, it's just too much. You know, I think there are definitely issues in the game that we saw being made apparent. It's clear that the Shivana pick is not working for these junglers and Cuz didn't convince me that he knows how to play it, but... Ultimately, there's a lot of moments where like Leaper made mistakes and got caught out. Like this was when it was looking okay. You know, Andal had a pretty good start of this game. Shout out to him. But it just felt like in they didn't have an answer to aiming. And in these fights, you know, Cuz leads the charge, gets one shot, right? And then it just felt like aiming was free to take over from that point onwards. Aiming played this one out extraordinarily well on top of everything at the same time. I think that Aiming's had a phenomenal uh, second round Robin so far. Even in some of the games that they lost, uh, especially the one against Humble Life Esports, oh, yeah. very heartbreaking for Aiming, but he's been playing mechanically extraordinarily well. With so much confidence, we know that Aiming's certainly a very much a uh, confidence player. Yep. But it, you know what? it is showing that he has a lot of it right now. You know, I think he probably, after some great plays here, probably going to win POG, but I didn't vote for him. You know why? Why? I voted for Lucid because he made a fantastic play by not first picking Shivana. Yeah. And uh, no, nah, to be fair, I think Lucid had a really good game as well. I would agree. Shivani, he was present everywhere. Uh, and also keeping up in farm against the Shivana, not an easy task, but I think both him and uh, Aiming have had a pretty fantastic series so far. Uh, and they've really anyway, been stepping well. up for this team massively. Yeah, okay, look at this equalizer. Oh, it's so Le good. Leaper was only on it for the initial damage. It was yeah. hit by maybe something else as well, but like evaporate. That was just insanity. As Aiming, yeah, not, lo not looking too worried about the Cassante. Yeah, he's like saying, save Aiming. He shouldn't die. He's the prince. He's the captain. He is the one. He wants to be in the last picture. He is and the that king. is what's going to happen. And he you is know what? Definitely oh, the gold king. He's the gold king, uh, and he actually turns. <laughs> he's so much the gold king. He turns I, uh, gold at the end of this. Oh, he does. Yeah, watch well. this. <sighs> okay. Oh. Shout out to Uri. Oh, Bang. he's there. It is. King. And that was like right as he was shooting a W or something like yeah. that. Yeah, no, Showmaker was... was actually asking if he was going to be the gold king again. <laughs> and he turns <laughs> gold as he says it. Oh, no, the answer is yes. I think that is definitely a yes. But also, I think we all knew um, that he was going to be. Oh, you know that 21,000 damage from King? I think. See, see that? The that, last team fight? That last team fight. I think he did 21,000 <laughs> damage in that, in that one team. 
Oh, man. One equalizer, you know? It felt like it did that much, I'm going to be honest. Yep, and I, I think it probably did, because uh, we saw that all of the health bars were empty at the end. And now we've uh, got some gentlemen standing alongside to break down that series. Let's throw it over to the space. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisun for the POG interview translation. And we are here joined by the solo POG on the side of Diplos Kia, Aiming. Congratulations on the win, Aiming. Thank you so much. With this 2-1 to -to victory, you ended your losing streak. How do you feel? Yeah, it was a big bummer that we were on a losing streak, but today we managed to secure a win. So I think we can keep the momentum and you know, pick up wins next week as well. And DK's matches against Kwangdong Freaks are always very intense. How did you anticipate today's match? Well, game one was very clean. So I was saying after that game, game two, you know, we got this and then we actually lost. We didn't get it. And then game three, we managed to bounce back and, you know, get the series. But still, I think we do have to overcome the fact that we are a little bit wonky in game two. I think that's one of our weaknesses. In game one, you played Ezreal. So how did you react when Ezreal was actually let through? And why do you think they allowed it? I was not expecting it to be open, to be honest. So very happy to lock in Ezreal as the first pick and I was like this is a win and then let's take a look at this replay where Ezreal was able to put so much damage well obviously I was asking for a teleport but he did not Azir did not come with a teleport so because of that I managed to you know, oh. kind of play even better because it, I was in a very desperate situation. So I even got a quadra kill. Sadly, not a penta though. I, I really wanted to get a penta here though. <laughs> and Shieldmaker hands off the keyboard and saying, fighting my team. And in that game, well, you actually scored 18 and 12 DPM, the highest DPM this season. Fantastic performance over there, so congratulations on that as well. But moving on to the second game, we saw Tringdamir mid appearing first time after more than 800 days. Is that a pick, uh, like counter pick against Corky? Yeah, we wanted to come up with champions that can actually kind of exert more pressure up against Corky in the mid lane, so it was one of the picks that Showmaker practiced. Recently, Jungle Shivana has been making appearances, and it's the talk of the town right now, but we have a very mixed reviews of that champion right now. What are your thoughts on this? I'm on Team Shivana is really bad, you know? I don't know why she's on the meta right now, so I don't get it. Then no more Shivana game on the side of, or like never a Shivana game on the side of Diplos Kia. I don't know. It depends on Lucid, you know, how he prepares. And then game three, there were so many kills, starting from the laning phase to team fights. And then there was a fancy solo kill moment by your Kaisa. How did you see that opening? I was, you know, hitting the turret and then trying to get a proc of the Kraken Slayer. And then we, actually there was a fight opening up on the, like, the red camp. So I knew that the opponents will not pay attention to the mid lane. So I managed to go for the kill. And aiming, everyone knows that you are the Gold King of the LCK. And you already secured the... Uh, Gold King of the Year already. Why do you think uh, this has been one of your characteristics this season? I mean, it's all thanks to my teammates, you know, they always let me get kills and farm, so... Yeah, thanks to my team. And then at the end of the uh, Game 3, Showmaker jokingly asked 
Har uh, Amy, are you going to be the Gold King again this week? How do you feel about possibly being the this week's Gold King? I'm pretty sure I'm already secured, but I'm more focused on winning matches. And today, Kuro and Bono and also Soan came to the venue to support you. I think you also got a former teammate buff as well, so anything you want to say to them? I invited three, Kyung's, you know, Kuro, Bono, and then one of them was late. I'm not going to name any names, but you know, you guys have all the clue, but he's right there. You see them. But thanks to them, I managed to win. And DK's next match is up against BNK. And what are your resolutions uh, as you aim for another winning streak? Uh, even though we were on a losing streak for a little bit, uh, I hope with this momentum we can start up a winning streak. And this will be the end of the interview with Aiming and back to the space. Thank you.